And now she goes, how's my Chad doing? Because she knows I want to be a Chad. <laughs>Friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we're trying something a little bit different. This is r slash incel tier. <laughs> Feminism is cancer, he typed. Vaping and chugging Mountain Dew. It's killing us, man. The microwave dinged. His taquitos were ready. <laughs> Is this incel status or, or neckbeard status? I'm not 100% sure. But sure, if it makes you feel better, we call it an incel. That's good with me. R slash <laughs> uh, off my chest. I really like this post, actually. Women don't hate you because you're not conventionally attractive. In my college class, there was this guy that was about 150 pounds overweight. He had Pokemon tattoos and clothes that didn't fit him, but I thought he was the cutest guy in the room, which was filled with athletes and frat boys, supposed chads, if you will. He spoke with purpose. His presence was so strong because he was confident. I developed a crush on him, and before we had a test, I went up to him and asked for his help, reviewing even though I had perfect grades. I just wanted to speak to him because I thought he was attractive. Other people were confused about why I wanted his attention, but I sure as hell wasn't. He was so funny and smart. He was handsome and incredibly dorky. We talked for hours in the library after class. I saw so many posts where guys list physical attributes and claim that that is the reason why women don't like them. No one likes to hear this, but it's true. If you know who you are and present that to the world unapologetically, people see that. Oh, there's so much truth in this post. <laughs> Can I get this put on a t-shirt? God damn. Incels... Uh, involuntary celibates, for those not in the know. I probably should have explained that at the start. Incels are just never mature enough to, to look inwardly and see that maybe it is their piss-poor attitude that is the reason that women will never interact with them. They just blame it on something physical. Oh, I'm a height cell. Like, <laughs> that means they're too short. Oh, I don't make enough cash, so this woman money-mogged me, which means that she makes more money. Mog is, uh, like, above, I guess. I don't know what it stands for. <laughs> There's a lot of insult terminology. It's really weird. It is literally like a cult, and that, I think that's why these people get brainwashed. But the positive side is that they can be identified really quickly if they drop any of these words unironically. The truth is that men look at physical attributes a hell of a lot more than women do. Develop a personality, know who you are, and, and you'll see. The ladies will come flocking. It's easy. I mean, maybe not easy to develop a personality for an incel, but <laughs> just try your best. <laughs> and this is what no government-mandated girlfriend does to a motherfucker. God damn. That's horrifying, isn't it? And yes, incels do indeed, a large subsection at least, believe in government-mandated sex and or girlfriends, which is, <laughs> I don't even have to tell you how creepy that is. But look at this dude, okay? Aside from, like, the weird beard and dumb haircut, I, I think that he could do pretty well if he wasn't an ugly person inside. You know what I'm saying? But he doesn't have the sort of self-reflection. You see, he just uh, gets shot down and then comes home and he's like, Oh yeah, it's because my eyes are brown <laughs> or something like that. It doesn't make any sense. But like I said, logic really has no place here. Uh, uh, I'm saving myself for a virgin trad wife. I wish I could one day marry a deranged asocial schizoid. <laughs> <laughs> I love these comics, bro. The level of delusion. 
it really does draw parallels to like the big fat neck beards that want to go to Japan because oh they like Western men over there. But really, nobody's gonna look twice at you because you're weird. <laughs> you smell bad. Like it's not gonna go the way that you think it's gonna go simply because you haven't looked inwardly. You think any woman wants to get together with a guy who like just spends all night arguing on the internet? There's only one that does, and that's Miss Red X, and she's taken. So, <laughs> give up those dreams. I'm so confident that one day this virginal, traditional waifu will find the insane incel neckbeard nice guy of her dreams. <laughs> Maybe just uh, get on the internet and post around. But even then, incels will feel too insecure. They'll be like, that means she enjoys the attention of men. <laughs> you guys, don't give her any attention. We've got to run the other way. Have you considered that maybe this is why you're alone? <laughs> Christ. <laughs> uh, I wish some girl could see past my looks and just like me for who I am. I love you, Robert. Yeah, but you're ugly. <laughs> Uh, this is factually accurate. I hate to say it. Women are mostly looking for, uh, you know, a personality, humor, status, and resources. Men are primarily looking for a woman that, uh, looks good on their arm. That is at the top of the list. There is, of course, intelligence and humor and all that other stuff. But <laughs> as far as most men are concerned, it, it falls under looks. So why are there not more fem cells? Hmm. Perhaps there are. They just haven't metastasized into a horrid community like this yet. <laughs> and I hope it never happens, honestly. I would hate to see that. Maybe it does sound, you know, cold or harsh to lay things out so bare in this format of, like, girls want this, guys want this, which, uh... I heard about these theories in a documentary called The Male Gaze Versus The Female Gaze, and it basically broke down how men and women see themselves versus see the other gender. It was super interesting. After this video, I hope that you go look it up. Um, I'd like to show it to every incel. <laughs> and maybe they could finally use it to determine that it's not their, you know, sub six foot height that is keeping them down. <laughs> that is a ridiculous thought. Get over it. Anyways, moving on. Oh, God. Imagine being this delusional. Incel memes are fucking wild. <laughs> I think this is the first one that's actually from the mouth of an incel. So, um, just go ahead. Drink it in. <laughs> Aborted girlfriend. Sorry I couldn't be there for you, Anon. My mom had other plans. Hey, we would have been born on the same day. We're like twins. I would have liked to have a lot of kids with you. You're not eating healthy, and you look so sad. I could have cooked you a hot meal. I'll be praying for you. <laughs> it got me really good. Uh, uh, it almost killed me. Then I'd be your aborted husband. Self-aborted. <laughs> There's apparently an entire group of incels who think the reason they can't get girlfriends is because someone aborted the one and only fetus that would have grown up to have low enough standards. <laughs> that is completely accurate and also completely horrifying. Wow, I hate just about everything about this. The irony is that incels like to use the word cope a lot, generally to put down other people's coping mechanisms, you see. Dude is like, yeah, I wouldn't mind being a stepfather. You know, it gets our family off to a head start. And then the incels are like, nah, that's a cope, dude. She's a roasty, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Which a roasty, if you don't know, is uh, a woman who has ridden the cock carousel. <laughs> <laughs> There's just some wild, like, I probably should do a whole video on what it is to be an incel or a neckbeard or whatnot. 
But getting to my point, the, the wildest thing about this whole meme is that it is the biggest cope that I've ever seen. I would totally have uh, an imaginary girlfriend if her mom didn't abort her. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, whatever gets you through the day, bro. But I legitimately don't think that this woman ever would or could exist. <laughs> Even if she was born, society would mold her into, uh, anything but your girlfriend. Hey, here's a hard-to-swallow pill. Even if we lived in your perfect world, where women don't have equal rights and fathers basically own their daughters, you would still be an incel, because no father worth their weight in shit would ever give their daughter to you. <laughs> Uh, there's just too much realism going on, man. It's like that monkey's paw type of stuff. You know, they get their wish, kind of. <laughs> but you don't suddenly ascend the social hierarchy just because women no longer have rights. <laughs> All those daughters are going to get uh, pawned off on, you know, the top 10%. That's what they say. Top 10% of guys out there get all the chicks. <laughs> Which I don't think is how it goes. But in this uh, sick fantasy, yeah, that's definitely what would happen. Be like, hey, Bill Gates, I know my daughter would be your 50th wife, but I'm trying to get into your family. Because you got money. <laughs> Resources. Uh, it's a sloppy edit of the meme and a little bit wordy, but yeah, there's truthiness. I will give it that. So, uh, who the hell y'all trying to fool with this sex robots will replace women shit anyways? I have been inside your houses. You can't even use a coaster properly. Now you're trying to tell me you'll clean and maintain a robot that you come in? Uh, okay, Josh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I assume it's not self-cleaning. You probably just pop the vagina off, throw it in the sink, but that's five minutes that I couldn't spend. I'm too busy improving my intellect by arguing with strangers on the internet and looking at hentai, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> I am legitimately terrified for the robot uprising, but yeah, I'll be even more terrified when they smell like stale cum. <laughs> <laughs> If you continue to put your penis inside of that, your schlong is going to fall off. Nothing good can come of this. <laughs> Just letting it fester inside of a robot vagina. <laughs> this is why the, the coom sock will always be superior. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this one. This is, again, crossing lines, just like the last one over, like, neckbeard incel, nice guy type of stuff. This is definitely our favorite sign in the bar. Also, if dudes could stop trying to kiss our female bartender's hands, that would be great. They do that? <laughs> How drunk do you gotta be to do that? I think this is why they started just sliding drinks down the bar. Stay the fuck away from me. <laughs> Enjoy your drink. <laughs> uh, why the female cashier is being nice to you. She is uncontrollably and sexually attracted to you. Zero percent. Because that's literally her fucking job, you cretin. One hundred percent. <laughs> We've seen it so many times, man. Women getting hit on at their job and they have to, you know, follow the social contract and be nice lest they lose their only source of income. Like, ah, being so trapped. I can't even, I don't ever want to even. You can definitely hit on a girl, just don't do it at work. You know what I'm saying? Ask her when she gets off. Come back to kick it, you know? It, there's a way to do it, and it's definitely not, like, pinning her down while she's trying to do some other work. But I don't know why I'm trying to explain social cues to incels. Waste of my breath. <laughs> Let's move on. Oh, now this. This is a real Chad, all right? So a new sultan rejects proposed 14-year-old wife, says she's a minor. The new Sultan of Bamoon in Cameroon 
Nabil Mbombo Najoya has declined the offer of a 14-year-old virgin in marriage as tradition demands. According to tradition, the wife of a new sultan must come from the Najim Manchu family to terminate traditional rights known as La Kam. This Sultan Najoya refused the 13-year-old girl offered by the family because she's a minor and opted to marry his longtime girlfriend instead. He has, however, promised to sponsor the 14-year-old from secondary school right up to university. Hey, there you go. Look at him. He's like, I don't give a damn about tradition. Why do you want me to marry this child? I'm going to marry my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> the person that I actually love. Most traditions are kind of stupid anyways. Okay, maybe not most. I like tradition for the most part, but there is some stuff that's, you know, outdated and weird, and, and this is definitely one of them. <laughs> I don't like this at all. So I'm super proud that he was above all of that. You know that the incels would have taken that little 14-year-old girl. The family would have never seen her again. She's locked up in a basement, chained to a radiator. <laughs> she doesn't even get to eat because uh, this incel's neat, living off government bucks. Ugh. And neat, uh, N-E-E-T, for the uninitiated, not in education, employment, or training. Which I find that most incels aren't because if they were, then they wouldn't have time to be mad at the world. The world would be presenting them opportunities because that's what happens when you put yourself out there. They really are just that terrified of, of failure that they don't even want to try. They can't stand the thought of failure. Let me tell you something. I have failed endlessly. <laughs> <laughs> I still fail in like smaller ways. You remember the 12 days of cringemas? Had to pull the plug on that. The algorithm was punishing my channel. <laughs> YouTube does not like experimentation. Which, if this video performs poorly, then uh, <laughs> we'll probably all know why. Why don't girls like me? Hey, Dylan, it's me. Girls. All girls. <laughs> Only you understand that all women share a unified consciousness, Dylan. Be one with me, Dylan. Link your mind to the hive. <laughs> I mean, nobody actually thinks that all of any gender is some sort of giant hive mind. This is just hyperbole, but I will say that broad strokes get the fence painted faster, alright? Is it really an incel meme? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> this is some some normie meme type of stuff, isn't it? I would totally join the hive mind though. Where's my invite? God damn it! <laughs> Incels. <laughs> How can you not accept the black pill, virgins? I'm not going to base my happiness off of the preferences of others, bro. That is the chadliest thing that you can do. I have talked at length about how cool I think it is that people, you know, just decide to do their own thing and aren't swerved by anybody who's like, Ugh, that's weird, that's lame. So what? <laughs> I don't actually care what you think about this thing that makes me happy. I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for myself. And I think this is a key difference. Incels are so affected by the male ideal, they just want to stack up and be a manly man. Whereas virgins, uh, at least the ones that are secure within themselves, are like, yeah, this is what I've chosen, and there ain't nothing wrong with it. And they're 100% correct. When people laugh at, at virgins, they're laughing at the ones who are insecure about it, who let others affect their perception of who they are. And if that's you, stop letting it happen. It's a difficult process somewhat, but you can do it. Don't you want to be a Wojak instead of a Soyjack? Oh. <laughs> We're getting into so much terminology. I know the older viewers are probably getting a little lost in the sauce, but that's okay. I hope you'll pause and, and do some Googling. Wojak is the guy on the right. Soyjack is the guy on the left. There are many virgin... God damn it. There are many versions of the Soyjack and the Wojack. And yeah, apparently this is the meme that replaced, you know, Rage Face comic type of stuff. Anyways, we're here for a history lesson. I'm here to applaud the, the self-confident virgins. 
Uh, we're in the, uh, the last home stretch of the video, so I have saved some of the heaviest memes for last. I want to apologize to you guys in advance. This is the, the point where most people will nope out. So, uh, what would your ideal sex slave be like? Uh, who would even ask this? Oh, it's on the incels forum. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> what do I expect from a dumpster except a bunch of trash? Uh, she would have to be five feet tall with a Lolita build, uh, intact hymen. <laughs> uh, you can just say virgin, bro. You don't have to make it weird. He just doesn't want her if she accidentally popped her cherry on a bicycle seat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you've just saved yourself from a life of pain and misery. Maybe it's for the best. Uh, she's got a cute face and watches anime and plays video games while sitting on my lap. And by lap, I mean erection. Oh. <laughs> Bro, if you could stay hard while you're playing a high octane video game, I applaud you. <laughs> I can't do two things at once, honestly. I've tried. Never had or will have contact with men other than me. You're so insecure. <laughs> You're so insecure and everybody can see it. He's like, oh no, other men are going to swoop her away. I mean... <laughs> She would be relatively easy to swoop away, considering what just about every other man out there is competing with. An insecure, pedophilic man-child living off of government welfare. <laughs> of course she's gonna leave, so maybe this part of the plan is, is legitimate. But honestly, I hope that you would work on yourself to the point that you're not worried about dudes around every corner coming to take your... Lolita sex slave away. <laughs> God, this is horrible. Ugh. She's willing to do female, female, male threesomes with me, specifically. And will actively find chicks for us to fuck. <laughs> You're not into the devil's threesome, bro? Come on, give it a try. Nah, he's way too insecure to ever go for that. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, I want to disappoint two women instead of just one. <laughs> All right, good luck with that then, dude. In actuality, the female and the female would probably end up hooking up with each other while this dude jerks off in a corner. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even know what he's doing with that thing anyways. Go make him shoot his load in the toilet where all the poop trash belongs. <laughs> uh, she enthusiastically submits to any sexual demands I make. <laughs> Squirts female ejaculate like a fire hose. Ugh. God. Ugh, what? Ugh. <laughs> like a fire hose? <laughs> It's gonna blast you against the wall, dude. <laughs> oh, shit! Uh, oh, God. Extremely devoted, loyal, and self-sacrificing. Does all the domestic slave chores, like cooking and cleaning. You ain't gonna help out, like, even a little bit? I will say that you can find a chick that'll do it, but you better be providing a hell of a lot. <laughs> and even then, every once in a while, you should be the self-sacrificing one. Be like, you know what? Let me make dinner for you tonight. And wifey lets me try, even though I'm fucking horrible at it. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you want pizza or chicken nuggies? <laughs> She's like, I need vegetables. <laughs> I'm pregnant. I'm like, oh, yeah. All right. Uh... You like broccoli and cheese? <laughs> there you go. Broccoli, cheese, and chicken nuggies. Enjoy, darling. <laughs> no wonder she doesn't want me to cook that often. We just order out. That's fine. But yeah, of course, it is a partnership. I, I hate the idea of anyone in this relationship being considered a slave. 
is such a horrible mindset to have, dude. You don't deserve to interact with other human beings, let alone be in a relationship with them. But I guess that's what we should expect from this sub. Uh, she raises all our children with the minimum of input from me and never gets fat, no matter how many times impregnated. What the hell? Like, you don't even want to be involved with your kids. You're just like, yeah, shoot the load, and then I peace out and play video games for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> you think that anybody is ever going to agree with this? It's never going to happen. Welcome to parenthood, okay? You are going to get involved. More involved than you would like most days. <laughs> but hopefully at the end of it, you know, your kids won't hate you, which they definitely will despise you if you don't interact with them ever. They'll be like, Mommy, who's that stranger who lives in the room with the Xbox 360? <laughs> Xbox 360. Yeah, show my age, I guess. I want to play on the GameCube. <laughs> uh, uh, cute itty vagina that smells slash tastes of berries and cream. <laughs> uh, berries and cream, berries and cream. <laughs> berries and cream, berries and cream. Oh, I'm a little lad who loves berries and cream. <sighs> what are you talking about? No human tastes like berries and cream. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, you're killing me, dude. <laughs> what planet? Uh, it's never been devastated by Chad or Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it used to taste like berries and cream until Chad and Tyrone got in there all at once. It was the devil's threesome. You can't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> now she's ruined. She's just a roasty. I will admit when I was younger, I did care about how many sexual partners, you know, the person I was with had. Now that I'm older, who gives a shit, man? As long as you have a good time together, isn't that what's really important? Okay, you banged a hundred dudes, let's say. I only have three questions for you. Do we both enjoy each other's company? Are we sexually compatible? And are you clean now? <laughs> Which, I guess the last could be uh, tied into question two, because it is sort of insulting to hear that, but I would ask any partner if they're clean. I don't care if you had one partner or zero partners. <laughs> Just reassure me, okay? Did you get crabs from a toilet station bus seat? Just tell me no. <laughs> it's not insulting. I'm just looking out for my well-being and future partners' well-beings, for that matter. Oh, and the final point, of course. Uh, willing to raise our female descendants to be free sex fairies. <laughs> fairies? Uh, oh. <laughs> You can't be serious. This dude said free sex fairies. <laughs> I can't. Uh, uh, and they'll go around and rescue the man of r slash incels from their subhumanity. Why do females like this not exist in real life? Just lol and whoever devised this nightmarish universe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, dude. Uh, this post is so worrying and so heavy. Also hilarious, but with an extremely dark bent to it. This universe is definitely not nightmarish. This universe is cool as hell, but the truth is heaven and or hell is what you make it. We're making it right now with the decisions that we make every single day. There might also be an afterlife. I'm not 100% sure about that. But how difficult is it to just choose to be a good person, even if there isn't an afterlife? <laughs> it's not that hard. It should be pretty basic. And then I come to r slash incel whatever and uh, <laughs> kind of doubt that theory deeply. Ugh. All right, here's another really horrible one similar to the last one. And then I got two more that are uh, more wholesome. <laughs> 
<laughs> so let's let's grin and bear it. Uh, upon birth, each femoid that's women for the, <laughs> the uninitiated. God bless the uninitiated. I'm sorry that I had to bring all this to your attention. I probably shouldn't have done it. <laughs> They should have a, a microchip implanted into their vaginas and anus and mouth. The chip will be used to detect when a femoid has a penis penetrate any of these holes. <laughs> Here we go again with like the extreme sexual insecurity. It's just pathetic, man. I originally thought of this idea to prevent against false rape claims, as the chip would be equipped with a recording device. Yeah, do you recognize this? <laughs> the, the tip of this penis? <laughs> a recording device inside of her vagina? I don't think that's as useful as you think it's gonna be, buddy. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, this is his big plan. This is how he's gonna change the world. <laughs> what an idiot! Uh, 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 however, I then realized that the device could be more versatile and be used to record how many times a femoid has vaginal, oral, or anal intercourse. When the chip detects that the femoid has gotten involved in sexual activity, it sends this information to a computer. Just any computer? <laughs> Alright, cool. <laughs> I got all this weird information about penetration on my computer now, and I don't know what to do with it. Uh, the femoid would then be obligated by law to receive a mark on her left cheek, a permanent tattoo, so that everyone she encounters therein is aware of her sexual history. The marks will be color-coded, so there's a different color for anal, oral, and vaginal penetration. Yeah, what happens if you don't get the face tattoo? Why do we need a face tattoo? <laughs> uh, who's enforcing this? I think there would be women out there that get a face tattoo before anything has happened, just so incels will leave them alone. <laughs> be like, you see this? I'm not your pure virgin waifu. Go away. There are many more worrying posts than this one. I had to skip over a whole lot of stuff for this video. <laughs> this is probably the worst one in this video, the bravest that I got, but it is so worrying, dude. How does somebody actually think like this? I mean, I understand sexual insecurity. It happened to me my first few times out of the gate. I'm sure everyone understands it, for that matter. But to take it so far and be like, I can't do it with anybody who isn't a complete virgin. It's like, bro, even the virgin <laughs> is probably going to realize uh, that the sex was bad, right? She's going to lay there traumatized, and then you're going to roll off of her after five seconds and go, oh, that was great. <laughs> She's going to be like, okay. Uh... <laughs> What the hell happens now? I don't know. You take a morning after pill or something. <laughs> Save yourself. Never call him back. I propose a another a face tattoo system where an incel has to get a face tattoo every time he says a racial epithet or denies somebody else their humanity. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be covered in tattoos. You can see them coming from a mile off and avoid them like the plague. This is like scarlet letter type of stuff, but to a completely new extreme. And I hate it. I realize it will never happen, but I still have the right to hate it. <laughs> All right, a little more wholesome, and we'll uh, try and get this video wrapped up. <laughs> Your daughter does OnlyFans. Uh, who is this? You don't need to know. I just thought you'd like to know what a whore your daughter is. <laughs> I could send proof if you'd like. And how did you get a hold of her pictures? <laughs> I subscribe to her OnlyFans. Okay, thanks for supporting her business. <laughs> uh, got him. Yeah, you want to talk all that trash, 
But really, you're out here on the internet throwing money around, trying to get what you could never get in real life because your personality is deplorable. Why would you go to somebody's mother or father or whatever? It's probably a fake post considering that the sender is the one getting owned here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why anybody would bother sharing this on the internet when they so clearly got burnt, but okay. Let's just accept that sex work is real work. I mean, I do YouTube for a living. I don't know how qualified I am to call anything real work, but <laughs> I do know that it takes its own emotional toll, much like YouTubing does, probably to a much further extent than YouTube does, because now... You're participating in a parasocial relationship via OnlyFans that involves coming, which makes people crazy. <laughs> it makes people lose their goddamn minds. Lucky for me, most people respect my boundaries. They realize that, you know, I'm a happily married man. I got kids. I'm not interested in whatever you got for me. They probably also don't want to get called cringe in a video, although I don't think that I would ever do that. <laughs> Unless it really was just like too good, you know. But for women, OnlyFans, sex workers, I mean, this guy's obviously looked up her information if it's true. So yeah, privacy has gone out the window in order to make a living. And to me, that's sad. You wouldn't have these problems if you worked at a Wendy's. Oh wait, yes you would. <laughs> Remember that Nice Guys video from uh, a week or so ago? God damn. I've said it many times before, but it must be so difficult to be a woman. Men definitely have their own stuff to deal with, but I don't know, dude. <laughs> You're comparing apples and oranges. What I do know is that I like being an apple or an orange. Which one's the guys? <laughs> Never mind. Our last post. It's really sad, but also wholesome. My grandmother now calls me Chad. <laughs> She's honestly the only feboid who I respect. I showed her Chad memes, told her about incelism, and told her about the Chads and the 2080 rule. Which I think is 80% uh, of women going for the top 20% of men or something like that. And now she goes, how's my Chad doing? Because she knows I want to be a Chad. <laughs>
It's just this guy who has set up his profile poorly or something like that and wants to blame everybody else for it. Like, you know, put a little effort in your photos. Maybe be funny if you're not, like, the best-looking dude. And you will get a date eventually, okay? But the hard part is it does require a bit of self-reflection to see why people might not be swiping on you or whatever. Uh, I'd argue it's even worse because they make money directly from screwing with people's mental health. <laughs> I mean, that's a reach. <laughs> Uh, do you think they actually consider or care about this? I mean, it's not my fault if you're torturing yourself over this app that I made. Yes, I do offer monetized features because we need to keep the servers up and, you know, make a profit off this thing that is, is essentially a free service. But this dude's out here like, yeah, they're purposely torturing me specifically. <laughs> Come on, man. You, you can't possibly believe that deep down, okay? The real way they make money is, is by helping people hook up and, and, and get off, right? <laughs> I'm sorry that you weren't included in the, in the group of people that took it up, but you can be, you know? <laughs> it seems like a really easy thing to do. Like I've said many times, I'd never been on Tinder, but... How hard could it possibly be? It's not as hard as you're making it out. And if it is, then don't torture yourself over it, you know? Step away from Tinder for, for five seconds and work on some self-improvement. And then maybe you'll do a little bit better on Tinder. It's weird how that works. And somebody steps in, tries to make him see the light. Look, stop blaming the app and start taking responsibility over your own actions. That's what I said. Tinder's an amazing tool that allows you the ability to connect with people for potential dates while sitting at home in your PJs on your couch. Isn't technology wonderful? What a great world we live in. Honestly, <laughs> I don't want to change anything about it. That is beautiful. That is a pretty sweet deal if you stop and have some perspective. If you can't see the positives of it, don't use it. If it's too stressful for you, don't use it. If you've tried everything and it's not working for you, don't use it. You're welcome to go about dating the old-fashioned way by meeting strangers in public or through friends and family. Precisely. God, what a what a beacon of logic in this uh, incel tier wasteland. <laughs> Unfortunately, the incel's not going to listen at all. Of course, we knew that already. I don't even use the app. I deleted it a very long time ago. Your comment sounds like you're a Tinder spokesperson. <laughs> yeah, Tinder has to pay people out here to amp up their app. I'm sure that's how it's working. Maybe they did in the past, but essentially date hookups while you're at home in your PJs is kind of an idea that sells itself. They don't have to try very hard to push it out there. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, the dude is right. Just use a little bit of perspective and be like, Jesus Christ, 20 years ago, I would have never been able to do something like this. I'd have to grow like uh, a, a dick and some big old balls and go chat to a girl at a Barnes and Noble or something like that. <laughs> it's so much easier. You kids just don't know these days how easy you've got it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've always had the internet in my life, so I don't I don't really know how it was before the internet either. But I assume it sucked. <laughs> Even just imagining life without the internet, that that's terrible. I don't want any part of that. But of course, this dude can't see logic. He just uses somebody else's completely valid point to reinforce his completely shitty viewpoint. And... It's amazing. You're going to see that sort of a theme anytime that you interact with incels. You're going to see it through this video, and I think that's beautiful. That's why I have compiled these posts for you. So let's jump into the next one and just try to enjoy it. You know, look at it as a science experiment. If you go in actually hoping that you're going to change these people, you're just going to be disappointed. <laughs> so keep that in mind moving forward. So if you don't have Tinder you might end up in a position like this guy from 4chan. <laughs> uh, this is another, like, you have to eat all the eggs tier uh, wizard in 4chan. 
absolute basement dweller with no concept of how reality works, and I love it. Uh, so, it's settled. I'm 21, and I refuse to be without the company of a loving woman any longer. That's right, it's within your power to change it, 21-year-old Anon. <laughs> you got this in the bag, I totally believe in you. Let's hear what your plan is, so I can quickly stop believing in you. <laughs> the journey starts here. And I will give it my all. There is a Chad in me. <laughs> uh, and the only thing stopping me is my lack of dedication. Yeah, that's the only thing. <laughs> uh, forget the fact that you are like just a complete weirdo. It's just a lack of dedication. I gotta stalk these girls a little bit harder. That's all. <laughs> I will go to church and cons to scout for awkward girls and strike up a conversation with them. Oh, yeah. Awkward girl meets awkward guys. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> uh, I'll shower at least two times a week. Are you sure? That's a commitment, man. I mean, some people in the Twitch chat say, like, that's super gross, I shower twice a day. I mean, I'll shower, like, every other day, you know? Two times a week ain't too bad if you want to get the, the oils in your hairs going and stuff. Especially if you don't work, like, a hard, sweaty job. This guy doesn't. He, he's a basement dweller, essentially. But he might start needing to shower more often once he drags his 600-pound ass up them, them basement stairs. <laughs> Mommy's not bringing the tendies down anymore. I get really sweaty when I eat. It's, <laughs> it's difficult. Oh, so yeah, I don't think two times a week is like the worst thing ever, but I, I really don't believe it's even going to be two times a week. <laughs> uh, I'm going to download Bumble and Tinder and Hinge and make profiles for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> like I said, people can smell desperation, especially women, from a mile away. Because all it really takes is one weirdo to get, like, you know, locked up in a basement or murdered or something like that. So women are very cautious about who they choose for partners. If you have, like, the stink of desperation on you, women ain't gonna be interested in that. You ain't gonna get swiped on or whatever the hell it is. You think signing up on all the dating apps is the answer? No, because the stank of desperation is the same. <laughs> I'll spot women alone in the street. See? Look at this. This is gross already. <laughs> uh... Uh, and I'd approach them with a fake purse to ask if it's theirs uh, to start a conversation without looking creepy. Yeah, a, a fake purse with nothing in it. And then the next step is he's going to have to get some fake driver's licenses. And then if by some miracle he does get a woman over to his house, she's going to open up his sock drawer and do a little bit of snooping and see all these <laughs> driver's licenses with missing women's faces on them. <laughs> uh, now you're under investigation by the cops. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> uh, this is the, the worst plan ever. You're plotting your, your little ploy. And it's so bound to blow up in your face. Is this your purse? No. Okay. <laughs> How does the conversation continue from there? <laughs> Would you like this purse? <laughs> Would you go on a date with me if I give you this stranger's purse? <laughs> uh, God damn. Yeah, just just total creeper. Scoping out women alone in the street. Like, that's already a red flag. Just this sentence fragment is enough to stand the hairs on the back of my neck right up. I hate everything about it. Uh, I'll also get to know my friend's sisters and their friends to grow the pool of options. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't think that's how that works. Like, if the sister's not already regularly kicking it within your friend group, 
I think your friend's gonna find it pretty weird if you're like, hey, can we go hang out with your sister? Uh, <laughs> like, no? Guess what? You can't even hang out with me anymore because it's pretty fucking obvious that you're trying to creep on my sister. So goodbye. <laughs> now you have no friends either. Congratulations, you screwed everything up because of your desperation. <laughs> I'll hit the gym to see if there's any cute girls <laughs> and figure out ways to approach them without seeming stupid or imposing. Well, to be fair, I don't know if you could ever seem imposing, but I don't know if you could ever not seem stupid. So... <laughs> Uh, one of those, yeah, you, you nailed that, but the other one, I think that's downright just not an option. The second you open your mouth, people are gonna be like, yeah, you stupid. You stupid for real. You think any girls at the gym are, are going to be interested in a clearly fat tub of lard who is only at the gym to hit on chicks? Like, she leads an active lifestyle. She needs a uh, somebody with her who leads an active lifestyle. She could tell just by one look that you don't fit that criteria. <laughs> it's probably not going any further at the gym. Like, why don't, why don't I try a bookstore or, I don't know, walk around an Ikea or something like that? <laughs> this dude is so desperate, bro. Even if he was at an Ikea or a bookstore, I guarantee that he wouldn't, like, you know, swoop in and make the move as soon as he sees the chick. He would stalk her. Stalk her to the point that she gets creeped out, and then when he finally does make the approach, she's gonna be like, Ew, get away from me. You know what I mean? Get out of here, you creep! Confidence is a big part of this game, and you simply don't have it, because you need to hide behind these plots and ploys. So maybe work on that first, and then maybe. I mean, again, I, I said it's futile to offer advice, but I can't seem to help myself. If by some miracle this dude does stumble across the video of me reading his post, he's just gonna be like, whatever, Reddit narrator cuck tries to give me advice. You don't know anything. It's like, yeah, actually I do. I got a beautiful wife and three beautiful kids and <laughs> a lovely family, but I guess continue on with your, your ploys and see how that works out. <laughs> you just got to be real, bro. It's not that hard to be real with others or yourself. And that's the first step. That's the first step to happiness. Uh, I I'm also going to make a spreadsheet. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah. Make a spreadsheet. <laughs> that's what I've been doing wrong this whole time. I didn't have a spreadsheet. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Uh, uh, for my possible candidates and see how well they conform to my ideal girlfriend standards on a graded scale. You think this is like honey pop or some shit? You think you're living out a dating sim? <laughs> Uh, yeah, a girl at the mall. Oh, <laughs> we share some of the same interests. Oh, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? A spreadsheet on a graded scale? Like, oh, God, you're the biggest nerd, bro. There's nothing wrong with being a nerd, but taking it to this extent, Jesus, I, I, I don't know if I can help you. <laughs> Uh, this is horrifying. Dude, make spreadsheets, goes to the gym, not to work on himself, of course, not to do something he legitimately enjoys, but to hit on women who aren't there to be hit on. Those women are there to work on themselves. But he's just like that nice guy from the manifesto post. He's like, oh, she's wearing yoga pants. She wants it. <laughs> <laughs> just chill it out, bro. Like, if you were yourself, you could probably find somebody who could accept you with, with all your idiosyncrasies and flaws, but you don't even want to try to be yourself. You don't even want to risk exposing your real self. And I think that's sad. If, if you were being honest with others and yourself, I don't think you would have a problem finding a, a, a girlfriend. But yeah, how can you be honest with others if you won't even tell yourself the truth? <sighs> ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous, man. I mean, why not go the full nine? 
Why not show the girls where they rank on your, your spreadsheet, on your grading scale? Be like, look at this, you're, you're a nine. We're destined to be together. <laughs> uh, before she just like pepper sprays you <laughs> and tells you to never contact her again. <laughs> your, your level of ass thickness is perfect. <laughs> I graded you an 11. That's off the charts. <laughs> <laughs> None of this is flattering. It's all really weird. Please leave me alone. <laughs> oh, it's on, you guys. The bloodline will not end with me. And I will have good-looking kids with my ideal girl. Yeah, good-looking kids. Totally. You understand genetics is 50-50, right? <laughs> <laughs> Even if you find like a total cutie pie, your kids' genetics are gonna be 50% cutie pie and 50% basement dwelling wizard <laughs> stalking people in the gym and, and posting on their spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> it's never gonna work, dude. I understand you're 21, but you have the mindset of like a 13 year old with all these these little plans that you're breaking out fake purse <laughs> Fucking fake purse. I bought a dog So people would talk to me about the dog and I could ask about on a date like bro. Just it's not that hard <laughs> Be yourself and we got people in the twitch chat saying that even if he's himself I don't think that he could get a girl, but the truth is if he was honest with himself about who he really is and not trying to put up this front of like who he thinks he should be somebody would accept him but he's scared he's scared to let down this facade and really take like an honest look at himself let alone let other people take an honest look at him and it's sad really you're making these choices and these choices do nothing but hurt you i believe you can start making better choices but it starts with starting, right? <laughs> so so wind it back. Just just work on yourself legitimately. Go to the gym to go to the gym and improve yourself. Go to the bookstore to improve your mind. And eventually somebody will find you interesting enough. You know, you, you can't you can't do it like this. This is not how it works. When people say that women or the world don't owe incels anything, do you think it's fair to say the same the other way around? That incels don't owe the world anything? I mean, nobody would even be insane enough to ask incels for anything. They contribute nothing. I think they're pretty proud of the fact that they contribute nothing. I don't understand what the point he's trying to make is. Yes, I suppose nobody owes anybody anything. That's what makes the world beautiful. That's what I like so much about it. <laughs> the thing is that some people uh, decide to contribute on their own, despite not being obligated to do so. And incels, uh, on principle, have just decided to contribute nothing. So which one is worth more? Which one is worth less, as far as society is concerned? Seems pretty obvious to me, but yes, I do agree that you don't owe the world anything. That's fine. You've made this choice. Obviously, you're you're quite committed to it. So you just do you and, and maybe leave the rest of us alone. <laughs> us proper decent folk don't want anything to do with you. I'm not going to invest any more time in this or trying to figure out what it is. Oh, we moving on. Um, no. Women will wait for the right man to marry. I will not settle. I have standards. She right though. <laughs> Wifey got asked to marry multiple times. As a matter of fact, I did too. <laughs> Exes were like, let's get married, let's get married. Both Wifey and I are like, nah, we're waiting for the right one. And then we found each other. Who knew the right one was right there the whole time? <laughs> but we had to, yeah, suss it out and find each other and... And that's part of the journey. Then you really know what you got. You got to put up with some some crappy ones. Figure out what you don't want before you realize what you really do want. So I, I'm with uh, this this woman, this OP. What she said seems entirely accurate. And she got 36 hearts for it. So yes, good for you. And then incel bursts in the door. 
Uh, why would a high-profile man settle for a simple person who brings nothing to the table except I can cook and support you emotionally? I mean, cook and support me emotionally? That sounds like a good deal. Isn't that bringing enough to the table? <laughs> Thank you for both of those things. Yes, I need that a whole hell of a lot. And wifey does so much more. You're boiling it down into the the lowest common denominator and really having like a good woman in your life it, it's it's life changing your entire existence gets better uh, because of this woman who backs you up i've been watching uh f is for family recently and the wife on that show sue is so supportive you know what i mean main character he's always messing up and the wife is always there like that's fine we're a team you know and, and that's really what it's all about so yes Cook and support me emotionally, please, thank you. I'll give you my entire paycheck in return. <laughs> uh, you don't know anything about me, and I never said I wanted a high-profile man. Stop judging. Wow. <laughs> Do you think he considers himself a high-profile man? I guarantee he does. He's living in his mother's basement eating tendies. He's like, I'm hope, I'm hope profile. <laughs> I have a college degree that I've never used. I'm high profile. <laughs> what have you done for, for the world at large? What have you done for society? He's like, well, I'm an incel, so we can't do anything for society on principle. Oh, okay. So you're not high profile. You, you've just inflated your ego to the point that you don't think you have to do anything to earn the title. Ridiculous. <laughs> If you didn't want a high-profile man, then there's plenty of average men everywhere. So what aren't you settling for, huh? <laughs> I mean, it, ha it doesn't have to be average or high-profile. How about decent? I isn't that somewhere in the middle? Like, I was not a high-profile man when I met Wifey. I mean, I'm still not, by most accounts. But I also don't think that I was necessarily average. I mean, that's why she picked me, right? Over the, the legions of other penises that are out there on the internet. There's like a whole, a whole army of them. Just like a terracotta army of, of dicks. They were just out there waiting. A, a phalanx of phalluses in excess of erections. A legion of penises, a cornucopia of cocks, a cockacopia, if you will. There was a, a plethora of peni. <laughs> An undeniable plethora. A plethora. A deluge of dicks, even. <laughs> if you got more in the comments, go ahead and add it. <laughs> Twitch chat out here doing the most. <laughs> it's beautiful. And she's like, I want that one right there. That was that that one was mine. <laughs> she loves your brain. She loves my brain. <laughs> she put a ring on it. A cock ring on it. <laughs> wow. No, it, it really is about like the personality and stuff. But the first initial attraction, yeah. I mean, she found me attractive, I found her attractive. Like, what's wrong with that? That's real, all right? <laughs> but the reason we decided to get married and all that stuff is, yeah, because we, we vibe. Our brains are the same and we agree on a lot of things. A phalanx of phalluses. Yes, exactly. <laughs> They're just out there waiting, you know? That would mean you aren't settling for someone under average, which isn't the common. So why are you still unmarried if you don't want a high profile? <laughs> and I'm not judging if you don't want a high profile man. Why is it so hard to find an average man then? They are literally everywhere. I mean, the average man is truly garbage. We're not going high profile, but you can't go average either. Like I said, Decent man is the way that you want to go and and who really cares if she's unmarried like why is that such a big deal for this dude? He's like you need to get married right now. W what are you her fucking father? You need to make me a grandfather right now <laughs> You can't control anybody's life especially not somebody that you just met on I think this is TikTok. In the TikTok comments you out here just showing your whole ass asking people why they're not married 
How about we flip reverse that, bitch? Why aren't you married? How about you answer to me? Explain your, your singleness to me. Oh, because you're a basement version. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess we answered that one in short order. God damn it. <laughs> Lamau, isn't that what y'all want, though? Submissive woman who can cook? Yeah, I'm not pulling any punches. I was completely obvious that... that <laughs> Somebody who cooks and cares for me emotionally. Here's my paycheck. Like, <laughs> I'm not a very complicated dude, okay? I mean, I guess there are some caveats to that. You know, there's reasons that I didn't marry my exes. You know, one of them wasn't funny enough. The other one abused alcohol way too much. Like, <laughs> I got my reasons for picking wifey over everybody else, but I'm, I'm not, I don't got to answer the fucking TikTok comments. Don't ask me any questions. <laughs> I have no comment. The subject is closed. Moving on. And some of them will wait forever because you can't make the guy you want want you, especially after a reputation, but that ring will speak. Now that is some sad shit. Women waiting around for like an entire decade for a dude that's like, yeah, we'll get married eventually. No, no. <laughs> we don't play that type of shit. You do it now, or, or I gotta go somewhere else. I gotta find somebody who is willing to commit. I'm sorry you're scared of commitment, but um, that's the reason that you're forever alone. Or one of myriad reasons, probably. Unfortunately, many women have these delusional standards, and that's why they get old and stay single. Might as well get you a cat or a dog. Oh my god, here we go. Delving into the incel status. How dare you have standards, women? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, bro? You think I want to marry an alcoholic who, who hits me? Is going to knock me up and trap me in a loveless marriage where he's too insecure to allow me to get a job? Because he asked me first. I might as well just marry him because I don't want to get old. I don't want to get old with a cat and a dog. <laughs>
these fucking dudes, bro. <laughs> Notice the words he used. Girls, guys, men, women. It's a truth quite telling. Do you agree now? No. <laughs> not, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Your whole shit is ridiculous. I mean, it's on TikTok. I don't expect, like, the highest caliber of intellectual arguments from the TikTok comments, but I do expect something. Just, just some baseline would be nice. But no, we can't even get that. We can't even get that much. That's too much to ask for. Allowing this woman to have her own ideas about who she wants to be with. That's too much to ask for. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm glad I never visited TikTok. I I'm staying far away from the comments. I don't need any of this going on. Yeah, girl, you gotta get married. You know, get on your smegma male grind set. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. I, I hate basically everybody in this thread. <laughs> Let's just tell you straight. Get some help. Stop it. Get some help. Well, this redditor is active in r slash no stupid questions, r slash Albion online, and r slash true ask fem cells. So maybe you can glean what sort of person this is just from the subreddits that they regularly visit. <laughs> but let's really sink our teeth in and see how their personality is before we judge them too harshly, okay? Uh, I bet you're fat and ugly! Uh, I mean, I am, but why you gotta come out and say it like that? <laughs> First words out your mouth! That's quite an introduction, son! <laughs> You're Asian, too! So you only date white guys, too! Ha! <laughs> Actually, Asian women date Asian men- Never mind. I'm not gonna explain how this works. Because if Asian women only dated white guys, then Asian countries wouldn't exist. I just said I'm not going to discuss how it works. <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> Fucking JBW. What does that even mean? So apparently JBW means, means just be white. Which, <laughs> thanks Urban Dictionary, I still don't really get it. <laughs> but yeah, if you're Asian and want to date white guys, then you should just be white. Honestly. Like it's a choice or some shit like that. People have preferences. Leave people alone about their preferences, okay? <laughs> You're allowed to have preferences, all right? Uh, why don't you give me some of that 18 plus tight yellow bussy, the bitch? <laughs> yeah, that's gonna work. This is definitely gonna work. <laughs> uh, approach 10 out of 10. You should have showed her the spreadsheet. That would make it an 11 out of 10, honestly. <laughs> Why do you spend all that time in insult tears? Because it's fun to laugh. <laughs> People like you make me enjoy my life more because I'm not you. What's wrong with that? You just love to mock and ridicule the genetic trash of society. Like the eugenic bitch you are. <laughs> uh, this is like kamikaze by words is it, you, you're self-identifying as genetic trash of society <laughs> oh my god take a break man go stand in the corner you done <laughs> You can't let a bunch of lonely, suicidal men find comfort in each other's company in their own little safe space because you simply want us dead. You better pray to whatever god there is, bitch, that you never cross my path in real life because it'll get real ugly. Oh yeah, a little bit of r slash I am very badass in there. Perfect. You're doing great. <laughs> I'm sure she's going to respond to be like, what's your address? I'm going to come over right now. You just got me so hot and bothered with your discrimination against my entire gender. <laughs> You've identified yourself as the genetic trash of society. And girls like me love that. <laughs> uh, this is absolutely insane. And uh, she asks... JBW? 
what's JBW? Like we addressed, it's just be white, which apparently the Twitch chat knows a lot about. There's a large subsection of incels that blame their skin pigmentation for not being able to get laid. Okay, so what's the deal with all the white incels then? <laughs> I got a lot of questions, bro. <laughs> There's obvious holes in the logic, but to know that somebody actually believes something like this? Holy shit, man. Uh, I don't want anyone dead. If you're feeling suicidal, please seek help and support from people in real life who can help you through this. I bet you're fat and ugly. Yeah, lol. No. <laughs> Just because I'm Asian doesn't mean I only date white guys. I don't care about their race, and it's not exclusive to only guys. That's right, I don't fit into your little boxes. I'm sorry you spent so much time on incels.is or whatever it is. Getting fed poison and, and pictograms and graphs and charts that <laughs> don't even have more than whatever 5,000 data points in them. And they're like, this is legit. This is how the real world works. Like, no, dude, go out in the real world and see how the real world works. That's the only way you're going to figure it out. <laughs> I'm terrified to have this guy in society, but I guess it's better than the alternative. Him just sitting here and imploding on random people on the internet. But he retorts, Yeah, right. That's why you mock lonely and ugly men on cuck tears all day. You're definitely ugly and can't get a chat. <laughs> uh, oh my god, dude. Somebody actually talked like this. If I heard this out in public, I would not be able to stop laughing. They'd be like, that dude's a Chad, but I totally mogged him, bro. And I'd be like, are you serious? <laughs> uh, who talks like this? <laughs> you can't get a Chad if you're on cuck tears every day. Since an actual, attractive female doesn't even know or care about incel culture. Actually, uh, we have YouTube channels out there that are providing an insight into incel culture in order to warn people, men or women, about the fact that these weirdos definitely do exist and you need to be careful out there. Don't engage with them. I understand wanting to farm the cringe, but farming the incel cringe, it, it takes too much. The cost is far too high. You don't need to engage with these people. Uh, the, those females are too busy sucking Chad's dick. <laughs> uh, and bragging about their lives on Instagram and Snapchat. Bro, social media was a mistake. You have been so poisoned <laughs> by what you have seen. And you really think this is real life? You really think everybody out there is on Instagram and Snapchat? My wife, beautiful woman, doesn't give a goddamn about Instagram or Snapchat. She uses Facebook, but she doesn't post that often. We laugh at people when we go out on dates and people are like taking pictures of their food or whatever. We're like, ha, huh, you don't know how to live in the moment. We live in the moment. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. I wonder if this dude has an Instagram or a Snapchat. <laughs> That'd be terrifying, wouldn't it? I'd want to take a poke around, but I'd probably go blind. You're an ugly Asian void. And if you were male, you'd be an incel too. <laughs> uh, sounds like a stretch, but okay. Whatever you gotta tell yourself. <laughs> also, lesbians don't exist. Huh? <laughs> you just can't get a Chad. That's all that is. Huh? <laughs> Lesbians don't exist. Okay, yeah, just... <laughs> That's a take you can certainly have. <laughs> the only reason people become lesbians is because they can't get a Chad. Are you... <laughs> uh, I, I hope this is parody, bro. This seems like so ridiculous to me. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> if you really want to help me out, why don't you give me some of that bussy, you dumb slut. <laughs>
like I said, 10 out of 10 approach. Like, she's just going to be like, oh, yeah, take me now. <laughs> if just one Foyd gave me some attention and love, I wouldn't be like this. It's all your fault. <laughs> oh, God, bro. Uh, no, it, it, it's not all her fault. It's all your fault. You're just too scared to look inwardly. Why do you hate me so much? You've given so many reasons to hate you in such a short conversation. <laughs> uh, oh, beautiful. You and all women have treated me like trash since the day I was born. Oh, come on. Somebody pinched your cheek. Somebody said you were a cute baby. I don't know what the fuck happened. You went off the rails somewhere along the way. <laughs> <laughs> but you've decided to blame society for that instead of looking to improve yourself. Sure, why not? Whatever. Uh, so what if I'm five foot six and have social anxiety? Chad doesn't even need to have a personality. All he has to do is nod his head and answer yes or no questions. And girls will do all the laughing and talking for him. It's that easy for attractive men. You really have this built up in your head. This entire scenario, you're like, yeah, this is how real life works. You know how easy it is uh, to get somebody to start talking about themselves? Ask them a simple question. People love talking about themselves. And then, yes, for the rest of the first date, you sit there and you nod and you go, oh, hmm, interesting. Oh, yeah, I, I identify with that, sure. And then at the end, she says, hey, do you want to come home? I don't think you need to be an attractive man for that to work, right? <laughs> you just need to find somebody who's essentially on the same level of attractiveness that you are. At least that's my working theory. I mean, it's not going to work on this woman, no matter how attractive or unattractive she is, because she's quite clearly a lesbian and everybody in this thread is wasting their time. But I guess let's see how it plays out. <laughs> I'm not even that bad looking, but I have no way of competing against those model tier looking guys on Tinder slash social media. Aim lower. <laughs> it's fine. Aim lower. Even old post wall women who I wouldn't even consider dating, if not out of desperation, get attention from so many good looking guys. Post wall women. What's the wall? You know what? I'm going to regret asking that question. We need to do an incels deep dive video. An incels iceberg, a neckbeard iceberg, a nice guy's iceberg. It's going to become an iceberg channel. For just like the the outcasts of society and we'll, we'll try to shed some light on what the hell they're talking about here I suppose post wall is like you know after not even after menopause just like where incels start considering women to get less attractive or whatever because all incels are essentially pedophiles if the woman's older than 20 they're like ew gross <laughs> you know what I mean like I've seen so many posts like that I don't think this dude is talking about 50-year-old women, who probably there are some lonely 50-year-old women out there. He's talking about perfectly normal women in their 30s that won't give him any attention because, yeah, they're perfectly normal, and, and he's not. <laughs> like, by any stretch of the imagination, he is not. It just makes no sense that they only expect to date Chads right after, even though Chad just wants to pump and dump. <laughs> uh, he really thinks, like, everybody out here is a fucking Chad, bro. If I hear Chad used in real life unironically, I think my head's gonna explode. That would be the most hilarious thing ever. <laughs> You do realize that you don't even know if I have a boyfriend or not. Didn't she say she's a lesbian? Yeah, that, that answers that question, doesn't it? <laughs> They're delusional. They can't measure their own self-worth. I'm bi, not a lesbian. Well, this shit has gone off the rails. What is this fucking non sequitur, OP? <laughs> uh, okay, now I don't like OP anymore. 
why you even need to bring this up? Is she trying to derail the tangent that he's on or something like that? Trying to have him ask her out so she could shoot him down and... I, I don't know what is happening in this post, honestly. So what? You have a girlfriend? And? You just can't get a Chad. That's why. <laughs> now you've just validated what he said earlier. You'd leave her the moment you see a six-foot ripped, blonde-haired, blue-eyed Chad come your way. <laughs> yeah, cool theory, bro. Can you back it up? <laughs> no, he can't. I couldn't care if my future boyfriend or girlfriend was a Chad or a Stacy. As long as they have a good personality, that's fine for me. Yeah, I guess I should I should give her more credit. She is just trying to derail this. The dude is on, like, an endless tangent. Like, where are you really supposed to jump in on his tangent uh, without, whatever, perpetuating the bullshit that he's talking? So, I take it back. I see what you're trying to do here, OP. I still like you, OP. Just, just... <laughs> maybe, maybe now is about the point where we disengage. I think that would be a good idea. Anyways, dude says, uh, don't lie, ha 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 ha, personality. <laughs> Fuck off with that. You won't ever love a below average guy, even if he had the best personality. You're just a dumb, shallow slut. Ooh, look at me with my famoid. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, he's not gonna listen to logic at all. He's just going to use everything that she says to reinforce his own thought processes. Personality detector, ha ha ha. I don't hate you, lol. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I don't even know you. How can I hate someone that I don't know? Bro, you post on cuck tears, mocking incels, so of course you hate me. You hate lonely, disenfranchised men. Okay, yes, but add to that, I hate lonely, disenfranchised men who blame others for their problems and won't even consider working on themselves. That's really what it's all about. You can't look inwardly long enough to see that the the stuff that's going on in your head is all bullshit you only use these outside views to to perpetuate your own points terminal confirmation bias is what it is uh, if you looked at my post you'd see that i do actually talk about incels who want to leave and are genuinely really nice people well i have to go at the moment i hope you do have a good rest of your day take care Fuck you! I'll never trust a Foyd! <laughs> uh, oh my god, he really is hopeless. He's just so hopeless. I want to help him, but really, is like I said, it's just going to be a waste of time. He's not going to listen to a word that is said. Why don't you get off your high horse, you dumb whore? Acting like you're a saint and better than me? All those former incels were never incels in the first place. Just a bunch of fake cells. <laughs> uh, oh my god, bro. Yeah, you can't be a real incel. You're just a fake cell. It has become like a cult, hasn't it? A cult of confirmation bias, where anybody that finally slips the noose, they were never a real incel in the first place. That that no true Scotsman fallacy? What the fuck, bro? This is so ridiculous. It's fascinating to watch the leaps in logic, but also really terrifying. Take care, ha <laughs> ha. You, you want me dead, don't you? It's Stupid! I swear to God, I'd rip you. Why don't you have a threesome with me, with your girlfriend? <laughs> uh, bro, he's oh God! How can you even help somebody like this? You really think this is gonna work? What's wrong with you, bro? Pack it in. <laughs> you done? That would definitely help me. Stop ignoring me, you bitch! Pretty refrigerator! More like ugly refrigerator! 
What are you talking about? Does this guy have a stroke? Are we watching his sanity, the last shreds of his sanity just just slipping away? <laughs> uh, it's it, it went from being sad to being really terrifying and scary and and now we're just in in pathetic refrigerator. <laughs> What's he talking about, bro? I'll never trust a Foyd. That sounds more like a you problem, bro. Why don't you have a threesome with me? Well, wouldn't that make you a fake cell? Oh, snap. Turning his own logic on him. Ah, uh, high five to this OP. I went from like slightly disliking to seeing exactly what she's doing, and now I want to high five her. <laughs> this is fucking beautiful. Now you're a fake cell. Don't all incels want to be fake cells deep down? That's the reason for most of their rage, isn't it? Lamau, I don't even have a girlfriend. I'm single, and I'm not ignoring you. I was in the car. Wow, you really thought that last comment was clever, didn't you? <laughs> Refrigerator. I still don't get it. Can somebody explain that to me? <laughs> I don't want you dead. I, I don't want anyone dead. And then I presume the guy never responded because that is the last of it. How ridiculous is this, dude? What are you even supposed to say instead of females? <laughs> Birds? Chicks? Uh, hoes? <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> How do you describe people with a vag snazzle of the feminine species in a way that's less derogatory than female? <laughs> get over yourself. How about you get over yourself? How about you pick up a thesaurus? What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, somebody attempts to help them out. Hey, ever heard of the word woman? <laughs> Uh, this is so basic. I don't know how you have lost the plot so severely. Honestly, how many ladies do you not interact with in your life to literally forget the word woman? <laughs> uh, come on, dude. Are you serious right now? Birds and chicks? <laughs> you really went with... Avian garden tools <laughs> over like the literal classification, the word that is used the most, women. It's very simple. You could also opt for ladies if you're trying to be, you know, a bit more respectable or respectful, I guess. There's no way this guy is gonna end up respectable. <laughs> Just don't ma lady, okay? I don't even know where to start with this guy. This is horrible. It's time to wind it back. It's time to stop. And it's time to at least try and do better. <laughs> yep, GTA 6 is going woke slash diversity. <laughs> oh no, I I'm so bothered by this. What are your reasons for saying such a thing? One, pandering to women slash people who don't play the game or not going to play the game in the first place. You know what one of my wife's favorite games is besides Killing Floor 2? GTA 6. She mostly likes to do the missing so she can buy fancy cars and stuff, drive a big old truck around, but she loves the game. You're presuming an awful lot. 50% of the populace has definitely played one of the best-selling games of all time, right? <laughs> no more race and chick jokes. Are you sure? It seems like GTA tends to make fun of absolutely everybody, and I love it for that. I hope that that's not the case, and I don't believe that it is. <laughs> you think this person got, like, an advanced copy of a game that's not even developed yet? I highly doubt that. You are presuming an awful lot right now. Three, removing white women as Bonnie Elizabeth Parker and replacing her with a Mexican woman witch, which is <laughs> to white women. <laughs> I mean, why she gotta be a witch though? What are you talking about? Obviously, they've been staying on top of this more than anything else in the entire world. I don't even know who Bonnie Elizabeth Parker is. 
This obviously matters way more to you than it does to basically anybody else on the planet. And I think that's sad. You know what? You just keep playing GTA 5. That's absolutely fine. I don't want to go to bat for GTA 6 quite yet because, you know, I, I ain't ever out here pre-ordering stuff. That's just a bad idea. But if it looks good, I'll give it a try. Four. This game will fail. Yeah, I'm sure you think so. <laughs> you know this person's so invested that they're going to buy it anyways. Even if it turns out to be a complete dumpster fire, they're just gonna buy it so they can say, See, I told you so. Yeah, you, you really <laughs> served up a lesson and also served up your money to Rockstar. I'm sure they thank you. As long as the aren't walking around in baggy turtlenecks or something like that, I'm sure things are gonna be absolutely fine. And then I gotta be like doubly shocked that this post actually has like awards and stuff. People actually coming out after Rockstar for a game that's not even released yet. Honestly, who cares if, if there's a, a female protagonist, right? It's a game about running around shooting people like <laughs> you don't really need to be a man. It's not an exclusively man thing. Yeah, men shoot a lot more people than women, I guess. <laughs> uh, but wouldn't it be interesting to have uh, a dynamic female character? I really hope she's not a total trash fire, but I can't speak on that because I don't know nothing about it quite yet. I'm just excited that after a decade, we're, we're finally getting another GTA. <laughs> They've milked five enough. For now, I guess. And then in another decade, maybe we'll see GTA 7. Maybe. <laughs> uh, in GTA 5, we had three different protagonists. There's like somebody that whoever can identify with. They're all interesting, compelling characters. Why not add a woman into the mix? I'm sure it's not going to be just the one woman character forever and ever. She'll probably be one among a series of characters. What I want to see is a truly edgy game with a child wielding an Uzi running down the street. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd maybe consider not buying it. Oh, who am I kidding? I'd be first in line. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I need that. We are going to pre-order it after all. <laughs> uh... Oh, but I've yacked enough about this. I do love video games. I probably should start my video gaming channel back up now that people know I exist. But it would mostly be for the hardcore fans, I think. Uh, I'll give it some thought. Anyways, moving on. Many civilizations are in the process of collapsing. You show sure about that? <laughs> Citation needed. Okay, yes. Humanity has kind of reached a pinnacle. There's a long way to fall from here. There are some signs that some things might fall apart, but literally we are living in the greatest time in the history of the world. And you're like, eh, it's all going to fall apart. <laughs> are you sure? How? You can't just make a statement like that. And even if certain civilizations do collapse, who cares? It's happened from the dawn of time. <laughs> The rise and fall. It, it, it happens like clockwork, okay? You think you're gonna stop any of that with a Reddit post? Maybe. Maybe he'll he'll blow my mind right now, I guess. Let's let's read on. <laughs> Soon, at least for a period of time, you will reclaim your place in hierarchy above women. And they will be in their proper place. Below you, huh? I'm gonna be real honest with you. I don't even like being on top that much. <laughs> giggity, 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 goo. Stick around. Oh, that's not what you're talking about. Yeah, that's much weirder, what you said. What I said, also pretty weird, but yours makes it look tame by comparison. <sighs> Men are, are stronger than women for many reasons. We are their protectors, as well as their masters. You know, I could agree with you on the first point. Protector. Yes, I love to protect my wife, to make her feel safe and secure. But master? 
<laughs> Are you kidding? Can you really ever claim to have dominion over another human being? It's gonna be like one of those revolt uprisings where they burn the house down and stab the master while he lays in his bed. I don't think this guy is, is physically strong or mentally strong. That's why he has to point out, oh, we're generally stronger than the other 50%. That's why he has to point out, oh, we're generally stronger than women. Okay, but we're not speaking about men and women as a whole right now. We're talking about you versus yourself. Tell me what's your max bench press, bro. <laughs> I guarantee you I could find a woman that could outdo you. And then as for the mental side, yeah, he doesn't even have control of himself. How is he ever going to control another person? Even if they wanted to be controlled. Not by this guy. <laughs> and if a woman doesn't want to comply, you don't have to do anything heinous. <sighs> Simply banish them to the woods <laughs> and see how well they do on their own. Yeah, now this guy's like pulling out his Bear Grylls survival knife. He's like, I could totally make it on the woods by myself. Yeah, you think so? You spend most of your time posting on Reddit, bro. <laughs> I don't see how any of this knowledge applies to real life. Banish them to the woods. I'd like to banish you to the woods. Can we do that? Everybody in favor? All right, that's everybody. With these restored dynamics, men again will be the prize as nature intended. <sighs> be patient, sir. Your time is coming. <laughs> Bro, you think I'm going to wait around for a future that's never going to happen? My time is right now. I made my own time. This dude's going to sit around with his thumb in his for <laughs> however long just waiting for civilization to collapse so he can truly become the super mega alpha male that he believes himself to be on reddit <laughs> uh, come on dude this time that's all out the window men are still a prize just maybe not you in particular <laughs> <laughs> Talking about being protectors. Honestly, I think a lot of women out there feel that they need to be protected from men. Who are men the protectors from? I mean, wolves, that's not a problem anymore. Grizzly bears, not a problem anymore. Men are mostly protecting women from other men. Men like this guy. I just don't get it. Talking about banishing them to the woods, like... I'm not sure what time period you're stuck in. What time period you would like to regress to that you think would make you an, a normal human being magically. Like I said, this is the best time period. Go ahead, travel back to the 1800s. Die of dysentery. Throw your out the window into the drinking water. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't understand how you think it gets any better than this right now right here honestly I, I do find it really sad that this guy's answer to becoming the man that he really wants to be is just sitting around and waiting for civilization to collapse why <laughs> why not work on the person that you want to become right now it's possible if you had started 10 years ago you would be there already but instead you're like oh it's just a matter of time Time marches forward. You need to put in effort to try and improve yourself. It really, it's very simple, but apparently not for this dude. So, okay, whatever. Keep huffing that copium over on Reddit, and we'll see how it goes when you're 70, 80 years old, right? I think you'll have a lot of regrets, honestly. I don't want that for you, but this is the choice that you made. So what could I really do? This one's kind of topical, related to me becoming the man that I wanted to become. Yes, the penultimate Reddit YouTuber. Unrecognized in his own time. <laughs> uh, no, not really, though. But I do have a lot of fun with it. I'm glad we made it as far as we did, if I'm quite frank. So, hey, Cora. I think this is Cora. Why are there more women doing ASMR on YouTube than men? Eh, 
I have a doctorate in philosophy and engineering from Harvard University. Graduated 2007. Harvard University? Is that a law school? <laughs> uh, yeah, I studied engineering at a law school. Cool. Awesome, bro. <laughs> uh, you're killing me already. Just with the bio. So let's see what this genius has to say. And basically, it's the only content that females can make with ease. <laughs> what? Uh, usually, any content based on intellect or knowledge will require a man to make it. But if it's makeup or, or making cakes or listening to someone whisper into the microphone, then women are the answer. <laughs> Uh, you think making cakes and makeup are not intellect or knowledge? Like you made a point and then shot yourself in the foot in the same sentence! <laughs> uh, I find that really impressive. Did you learn that at Harvard? <laughs> God damn. Uh, moreover, I wonder why there were no women on the YouTube's Forbes list this year. <laughs> I doubt it has anything to do with the quality of their content. Yeah, I'm sure this guy does nothing but read Forbes magazine because he's such an intellectual. Really, he's just fetishizing people that are far richer than he is. The quality uh, of YouTube content, it can be really easily manipulated, okay? Think about something like Brew, which is a channel that I love, but... When they started up, they astroturfed their videos, had a bunch of view bots going to, to push the numbers up so that it would get out into the algorithm and, and have a wider spread. So are you saying that men are more willing to engage in these dishonest practices? <laughs> Maybe you're saying that women aren't as fiscally motivated, which might be true in some cases, but there's nothing wrong with that either. Money is not the be-all, end-all, okay? Do you know how much sanity is probably sapped from Mr. Beast or Red and Link or whoever the hell is on that Forbes list? <laughs> they had to give up a huge part of themselves to accomplish that. And that's okay, but so is not doing that. Like I said, I've taken steps back from my YouTube channel. We do editorials and a stream on the weekend. I don't wanna upload every single day. Do the numbers suffer? Yeah, but <laughs> at least I get to spend more time with my family. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that that's something that this particular dude has to worry about <laughs> out here lying on Cora. But okay, whatever makes you feel better, I guess. I'm shocked that this has any upvotes at all, honestly. <laughs> Uh, you, you, you didn't even make a coherent point. You weren't even close. <sighs> Moving on. Uh, women like cats because they're chads. <laughs> the cat is the chad in this scenario. I thought you were saying that the women like the, the cats because the women are chads. Which is objectively untrue. Women are Beckys and Stacys, as we learned from the incel dictionary, right? So starting out, I'm just going to say, your syntax is horrible. <laughs> Stick with me. Yeah, I'm going to try. <laughs> Everybody knows that all women have daddy issues. <laughs> what the hell is even that? Uh, and that's why they go for the bad boy, right? All women? <laughs> you show <sure> about that? <laughs> uh, you're just coming after like a whole gender. Are you for real right now? <laughs> uh, oh. The, the thug a-hole who abuses her and cheats on her. <laughs> Daddy didn't love her or pay enough attention to her. So she goes and finds a Chad who will do the same because it's familiar. <laughs> really? What about all these long-lasting committed relationships to people who are having an equal exchange? Are those just the outliers? Because I would say that what you're talking about right now is actually the outlier in this equation. 
But what am I doing trying to talk sense into the guy that thinks every woman on the planet has daddy issues? <laughs> uh, such a wild statement. Oh, but before, after, or, or doing that, they also worship cats because cats do the same thing. <laughs> Meow. I think you're dreaming. No, I'm not. Uh, where are you going with this post, man? If you got a point, please make it. Uh, they say they love you, but they bite you if you pet them. They ask for attention and punish when they get it. They're unnecessary <laughs> and thankless creatures. And women love them because they crave that neglect. You really think you're like some sort of intellectual out here dropping knowledge comparing cat relationship to human boyfriend relationship. I, I think you're treating the cats wrong. The cat is not supposed to bite you if you pet it. Are you petting like from the tail to the head? Because yeah, cats don't like that. Just head to tail, you know, scritch the butt a little bit. They do that little thing where they raise it up. That's hilarious to me. If they roll on their back and, and show their tummy to you, don't stick your hand in there because, yeah, that never turns out well. That's a trick. You're right. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I don't think that this could be compared to, like, actual human relationships. I'm not even that fond of cats, if I'm completely honest about it. My wife got a cat recently, and I'm like, yeah, okay. I guess I got a dog. You could get a cat. But no matter how much I... Don't really like that cat. <laughs> Not dislike, just don't really like. <laughs> I will always go to bat for him uh, over this guy. I'd be curious to hear this guy explain why cats are the way that they are. Did mommy hug them too much? Or didn't hug them enough? Or something like that? <laughs> You're humanizing uh, this animal and then trying to apply the humanization that you've done to actual people that probably have a functional relationship that you are not at all involved in. It's just really a stretch, man. <laughs> I don't know how or why you did all this, but it's time to take a break. Go out, have some decent interactions with some ladies or some cats. You got a lot to learn about both. <laughs> and then come back and maybe edit the post or, or delete it entirely. That's what I would suggest. It's really strange to me that somebody's thought process could like actually unironically work like this. But uh, I guess that's what we're here to, to bear witness to. Look at it. Look at it. It's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> Look at it. It's ugly, isn't it? Um, it turns out that another girl that I like has a boyfriend. I mean, what you want? You're too slow. Find his keepers, lose his weepers, right? <laughs> uh, I was talking to this cute Asian girl I work with, and she told me she's going to Aruba next week. I asked her who she was going with, and she said a guy who works with me, and then followed it up with, He's my boyfriend. Yeah, and he's taking her on trips to Aruba? What are you gonna do with her, OP? Chain her up to a radiator in the basement? <laughs> uh, one of these things is definitely preferable. I kind of went limp for a second and dropped the plate that I was holding. Yeah, this was just like a moment of terror for him. Tunnel vision, little panic attack and everything. Get over it, man. She's banging somebody that ain't you. So what? Uh, there were so many thoughts running through my head that I couldn't even say anything besides sorry. And I went back to the break room, tears flowing down my face. What? <laughs> uh, this seems like a slight overreaction. If you ever had a chance with her, this reaction basically threw all of that right out the window. <laughs> My manager noticed this and asked, what's wrong? I had to lie to her and say family troubles that I wasn't comfortable talking about. It wasn't just sadness that I was feeling. 
I was just ready to scream in anger. Why does this keep happening to me? <laughs> uh, go ahead, little buddy. Let it all out. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> Eventually, you'll accept your fate. Just be like, okay, well, I guess I'll be alone forever. Or alternatively, you can go to a therapist and maybe find out why you keep chasing after unattainable women. Even if you don't know to yourself that they're unattainable, I bet your subconscious mind knows, right? I kid you not. I was just about ready to walk out of here and never come back. <laughs> yeah, but you won't, though. I mean, just do it. Talk is cheap. You know what I'm saying? But you don't walk the walk. Wagey, wagey, back in cagey. <laughs> Uh, I definitely didn't feel like seeing her gorgeous face, knowing that another man gets to enjoy it to its fullest. <laughs> uh, and I once again f to watch from the sidelines. Maybe that could be your thing. Maybe you could learn to enjoy it. I, I don't know why you keep sabotaging yourself like this, little guy. You could literally just take this information, say, oh, and move on with your life. But instead, you're hyper-focusing on it for no goddamn reason. Okay, you wanted to be with her. Too late. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Just move on with your life. Piece of cake. He gets to go out with her every day. He gets to bang her. He has everything I want just because he happened to be in the right place at the right time. And it's not fair. Who said this was about fair, stupid? <laughs> what are you offering her that he doesn't? Like I said, he's taking her to Aruba. Does that calculate? <laughs> Does that factor into your thought process here? Like he just stumbled along and, and fell inside of her? No! This is a mutually beneficial relationship that they both consent to being in. And you're standing over on the sidelines like, I don't consent! <laughs> it doesn't matter what you want, dude. Get over it. Move on. Well, since I guess I have the day off tomorrow, I'll drown my sorrows in booze. Again. Yeah, that seems like a really constructive way to fix it. God, you are a mess, aren't you? Just from three paragraphs, I, I can tell you that what is happening here is completely fair. This guy does not know how to deal with his emotions. He's a child. I mean, ladies out there in the comments, all right? Tell me what you would prefer, all right? A, a man who will take you to Aruba is fiscally responsible or a man baby who cries at work and then goes home and drinks his entire paycheck. It's a pretty <laughs> easy thing to suss out, isn't it? What are you doing out here, man? Even if you did get this woman, like what would you do with her? What is your plan? You haven't got one. You'd be like, uh, I don't know, put it inside. Yeah, great. <laughs> How long do you think that's gonna be interesting for? Probably about as long as it takes you to get your pants off. And she'll be like, oh, that's it. <laughs> uh, this is rough. This is so rough. And I don't want to beat you up, but the kernel of truth is always there. And for this post, it is, please, just move on. There's no reason to get this hung up. I don't understand it one little bit. You can continue having your little temper tantrum on the internet. Complain about how everything's unfair and I'm gonna go get drunk, but that's not gonna help you. You need to think critically about what will move your life forward and then do that. I promise it's not that hard. Well, maybe a little hard to start, but once you start practicing, you're gonna get in the swing and everything's gonna turn out. Then, and only then, when you're actually deserving of a woman, will one fall directly into your lap. It's kind of weird how that works. Seems a little, uh, a little sus. <laughs> Probably you won't listen to advice from a YouTube guy, but uh, I swear to you that it is the case. Make yourself worthy if you are not currently worthy. Anyways, uh, moving on. 
closely related to the question that I posed for our previous OP is this. Uh, what are you supposed to do with a girlfriend? <laughs> See, they don't even know. They don't even know why they want one. Why do you want one? I don't know. I guess I'm just supposed to have one. What? <laughs> All of us are here on this forum because we can't get a girlfriend. And we're clearly mad for reasons besides lack of intercourse since we could go get... <laughs> What's rarely discussed here is... What we're supposed to do with girlfriends if we get them? <laughs> Besides intercourse. <laughs> uh, yeah, you didn't think that one out very much, did you? You have to interact with another sentient human being every single day. I mean, banging, that'll probably buy you, I don't know, a couple minutes. <laughs> well, what do you do with the rest of the day? I would hope that you would just hang out with them like a normal human being. Like really your girlfriend, your wife, your significant other, whoever is supposed to be your best friend. So what would you do with your best friend? You want to kick back, watch a movie, play some video games? Like <laughs> maybe you're overthinking it a little bit or maybe you literally do not know what to do, how to interact with a woman. But essentially they're just like dudes in a lot of ways. They like music and movies and breathe air and eat food. So just start there. <laughs> I would find it personally highly awkward to do anything with them. <laughs> would you just take them out to the movies or, or go to restaurants or, or, or what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, those are both things that you could do. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, this is probably the saddest question that I've ever seen. A lot of these posts are just seething rage, uncontainable, but this is just like a clueless dude, clearly lost, got scooped up by this literally internet cult, and even they are not providing the direction that he seeks. Like I said, I, I don't even know why you're thinking this hard about it. <laughs> She's just another human, all right? She's a, a really good friend that you also get to do special adult time stuff with. Doesn't that sound cool to you? Are you not motivated based on that? I mean, some people aren't and that's okay, <laughs> but why are you out here pretending that you do? You're like, oh, I really want to get a girlfriend, but what would I do with her? Okay, I guess you don't really want one then. There's really not even that much help that I can offer to this dude because that question is so all-encompassing. <laughs> There's so much to cover there. What are, you, what are you talking about, man? What do you do with the girlfriend? Whatever you want. Things that you guys enjoy together. Do I feed my girlfriend? How often do they need to eat? Do I need to water them? <laughs> Do I need any special equipment? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, <it's> a <laughs> please. <laughs> Sometimes you can also be separate, and that's fine as well. But the truth is, if you aren't tending to your own emotional needs, which you clearly aren't, then you're not going to be able to tend to the emotional needs of your partner. Uh, if she ever exists. Poor woman. <laughs> I do hope that this guy sees the light, finds a way out, but maybe just stop overthinking things so much. Once you're in a relationship, doing the relationship things, I think you'll find that it comes pretty naturally. So, best of luck to you, man. All right, next we got a Tumblr post that is just the dunk of all dunks. <laughs> My favorite is when people who send me an unsolicited sausage selfie and then they're like, uh, hi, are you ignoring me? Like, it's just so funny to me. Like, one minute I'm designing bioreactors and getting published for heat dissipation in polymers, and then I open this godforsaken app to dudes hanging brain who can't even pronounce saponification, calling me a s because I won't give attention to their limp excuses for existence. Oh! 
limp excuses for existence. <laughs> uh, that has quite a little zing, doesn't it? God. Oh, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> I'm sad it wasn't directed at anybody in particular, but wow. Wow. <laughs> Three billion years of evolution and the greatest form of communication you can conjure up in your fermented omelet of a conscience is submitting your wrinkly to a stranger on the internet to substitute the attention your parents never gave their mistake of an offspring. This is poetry. <laughs> uh, no, but it really is though. This is like one of the juiciest things I could have possibly conjured up. Can we make this a copy pasta? Anytime you get a, a sausage selfie from a stranger, maybe you throw this in their face or something. <laughs> Cause nothing that I could ever come up with would be as potent as everything that's written here. This is the most literal example of a verbal evisceration that I have ever bared witness to. And I've been on the internet for a long time. There's just so much good stuff in here. Every line is a treasure. I mean, I do have to dock some points because it came from Tumblr, but everything else about it, I love. <laughs> R slash rare insults. And honestly, if I could change the sub icon for R slash rare insults, it would just be this text all the way. <laughs> I love it that much. God, that's a good way to go out. We got time for probably one more, so we're gonna do that, and then uh, I'll take us back to the lab for the outro. All right. Meh, I blame fat women for making life harder for everyone. <laughs> uh, that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> uh, what you talking about, bro? <laughs> They ruined their own bodies and took themselves out of the game. So men have to compete for the smaller and smaller number of healthy weight women. Hey, were you aware that some dudes are really into big girls? I mean, like, really into big girls. <laughs> Everybody's got their own flavor, and I don't think it's right for you to come out here and start swinging on somebody else's flavor, okay? I mean, the name, the, the profile picture, all that is smudged out, so I can't see if he's a chunky boy, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume that he's a pretty chunky boy that feels entitled to skinny athletic women, and it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. On top of all that, yeah, you're making a post on, on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, like it's gonna make any sort of difference, <laughs> somebody's gonna see this and be like, yeah, you're right, bro. I would like to see you back this up with anything other than anecdotal evidence. <laughs> That's where you see this crazy amount of entitlement. Oh, you're not talking about yourself. The entitlement of the thin women, supposedly. You're the only one acting entitled in this scenario, buddy. <laughs> thin women are becoming scarce. They can act like bees and still get attention. Fat women become delusional and are shocked that men don't want to be around their unattractive bodies. <laughs> Everyone's miserable. <laughs> I think you are miserable and you're just trying to project that on everybody around you. I'm sitting here trying to click Moss Information because I need more information about whatever the hell he's talking about, but the button doesn't work because it's an image. So <laughs> I guess it is, we got what we got, and I hate everything about it. I'm a chunky boy. I prefer thin women, but <laughs> I don't make a personality out of it. I don't go attacking somebody else's flavor over it, okay? Big girls need love too. That's all I'm saying. Why is it delusional for them to assume that they should be treated like human beings. That's ridiculous. It's delusional for you to not think that. I can 100% guarantee that the reason that women are brushing you off and not acting how you want them to act is because of your attitude. They can sense your thirst, your, your blackened little heart, 
your worthless soul. And they're just like, I don't want any part of that. And who could blame them, honestly? You need to do better for yourself. If you ever hope to find what it is that you're seeking, just put in the slightest bit of effort to not attack everybody because you feel like a little person inside, okay? Obviously, nobody informed this guy that fat bottom girls, they make the rockin' world go round. <laughs> When men refer to themselves as alpha males, I hear that in the context of software, where alpha versions are unstable and missing important features <laughs> and filled with flaws and generally just uh, not suitable for the public. I honestly think we need to change the way that alpha male is perceived in society. Yes, you are not an alpha top of the pack, etc., etc. You are an alpha unstable, undeveloped version. <laughs> Uh, that is so beautiful. I've had this thought before, but I've never seen it put into words so beautifully. Glenn F. Henriksen from Norway. Just, just a beautiful thought. Thank you for putting that out into the Twitterverse. There's a lot of weird junk on Twitter, but this tweet, not one of them. This is gold. I'm gonna put this in the, the Red X Hall of Fame. First entry. <laughs> Oh, here's a beefy boy. The lab partner creeped out by me. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> I'm taking SYDE292L this term, and my female lab partner emailed the professor asking for a different partner because I made her feel uncomfortable. But all I did was be nice to her. I mean, what is your definition of, of nice? <laughs> Because from the nice guys that we've seen, yeah, nice can be pretty creepy. It's, it's a fine line to walk, and I don't know if you're socially capable of walking it with a plum, you know? Her cruelty, lack of empathy, and lack of consideration towards my feelings have deeply hurt me. And now I'm really depressed and feel like an outcast. Now on that, I can identify a little bit. I I've been depressed even in the past few days. I've been depressed, feeling like an outcast. Yeah, welcome to my world. <laughs> but the thing here is you should never let them see you sweat. You know what I'm saying? You can't control how somebody else perceives you. Maybe you were being legitimately nice. Maybe she was legitimately creeped out. And then you just kind of shrug it off and go, oh, well. If that is how you'd like to perceive my intentions, then that's fine, you know? Don't let your, your feathers get ruffled for no good reason, right? <laughs> that's, that's my little bit of uh, positive advice for you, I guess. You're only as much of an outcast as you accept yourself to be. You know what I mean? Whatever. <laughs> I'm so affected by the fact that all she thinks of me is just a guy who wants to go out with her. Ignoring all my other attributes like my personality and my interests and, and how nice I was to her. Okay, but you didn't deny the fact that you do want to go out with her, right? <laughs> Uh, but I'm not just that. You have to be interested in all this other stuff. Why? Give her a reason to be interested in anything that you have to say. You're really looking to open the doorway? You're really looking to build some bridges? Maybe ask her about her interests. Maybe, maybe take some notes on her personality and what she seems to like. You're expecting this woman to run into your arms simply because you exist? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not how it works, friend. Uh, just because I was nice to her. Yeah, okay. I get it. The bare minimum baseline. You gotta do more. You gotta you gotta be better. I was over the moon when I saw I had a female lab partner. <laughs> yeah, we, we all know why. This is just way thirsty, way creepy. I swear, ladies, they could they could smell that out. They're just like, ugh. <laughs> You're kind of a desperate weirdo, aren't you? Probably the biggest tip I can offer you is don't look at it as like a female lab partner. You really want a shot? You treat her like you would treat anybody else. And then you're in. <laughs> Maybe. Who cares? 
Not you, because you're just treating her like everybody else, right? High five. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, that was truly the best day of my uni life. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> I was so excited that I get to interact and get access to a female. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, yep, yep, that hurts right there. Get access to a female? Uh, oof, it hurts. And I would catch up on so many experiences I had missed out on. Oh my god, dude, this is not the way. I'm sure you had this whole scenario built up in your head, but it is not the way. Ugh. I was in ecstasy, thinking that I'd be able to hug her, oh, accidentally brush my hands against hers, and, and hold her hand, and guide her through the circuits labs, walk her home after the lab, and stand up for her if the TA was mean to her, and protect her from all the dudes in my class. <laughs> uh... Yeah, white picket fence, 2.5 children, a little yappy dog. I, I, <laughs> I see where you're going with this, but you've already taken it too far. Just because she's a woman that has to be stuck in the same room as you, you you're doing all this stuff in your head, and uh, this is not going to help your situation, okay? All of this hyper-focusing is only going to make you more and more awkward. And like I said, she's going to suss that out. <laughs> she's going to be like, oh, I see what you're about. Goodbye. Trying to protect her from all the dudes. I, I think she needs protection from you, OP. This is, <laughs> this is so weird. I'd meet her at her place to do lab reports, and one thing might lead to another, and I'd have had my first kiss. Oh, oh man. I think you've been watching too many movies. This is really generally not how things like this go. You, you need to develop a relationship with this person. And I don't mean like a, a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. I mean, treat her like a normal human being. See if you vibe with each other first before you go running off down this this fantasy road. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Uh, I am sorry you haven't had your first kiss yet, my dude. And, and honestly, I hope some of these tips can help you out, you know, teach you to cool your jets just a little bit. And then when it's meant to happen, it'll happen. Stop trying to force it, all right? Of course, none of this happened because just like every other female, she was a selfish demon. <laughs> uh, who didn't consider my feelings and needs at all? All she cared about was herself. She didn't even stop for a second to think about how I felt or what I was going through, and it just broke my heart. Oh, boy. Um, I know this is going to be difficult, but how about we put the shoe on the other foot? Did you at any point think about her feelings or needs? Or did you just assume that because she's your lab partner, you're going to get a first kiss off her? You know what I mean? <laughs> it really terrible, really manipulative. This is not the way to think. Not the way to go through life. I'm trying my best to, to root for you here, to give you some good tips. But the, the first tip, the first thing that you need to get through your head is that you need to treat women like people. Because guess what? They're people. First and foremost, above everything else, it's just another human being, bro. Treat her like a human being. <laughs> you probably could have done it if you just treated her like a human being. Anyway, the day after lab pairings were released, I reached out to her via email to give a good first impression. Oh, boy. <laughs> Asking for her number and letting her know I had an 83% CAV and there was no need for her to worry about this lab because I was confident I would be able to guide her through the course. It's coming off thirsty, dude. Would you have done any of this if your lab partner was another dude? I, I, I guarantee that you would not have. Matter of fact, I know for a fact 
If it was another dude, this guy would have been like, you better carry your weight. <laughs> but since she's a female, he's like, I'll carry you. Just get on my back. I, I can make you so happy. <laughs> she's like, ah, uh, nope. Red flags already fly it high. I couldn't do anything for the next hour because I was anxious for her reply. Checking my phone every few minutes, and then my stomach had butterflies in it. Dude, just put the phone down. What are you doing? Go take a walk. You know what I mean? <laughs> if she replies an hour after you send the message and you reply within like two minutes, that's not a good look either. She knows you're being creepy at that point. Borderline stalkerish. And now we have a record of it. I saw her reply, and to be honest, I was a bit disappointed. She sent her Instagram ID instead of phone number, <laughs> and said that she had a 92% average and didn't need my guidance. <laughs> uh, she's dunking on you. She's like, what's that? Oh, yeah. My grade is 9% higher than yours. He also didn't get the phone number for good reason, you know? And of course, he's going to take all of this extremely personally. <laughs> uh, make a post on Reddit complaining about it. Like, dude, just, just take the L, okay? Your hopes and dreams of a white picket fence, they aren't dead quite yet. But you gotta cool out. You gotta roll with the punches. Be like, okay, that's cool. Maybe you can help me out. You know what I'm saying? Give her the upper hand. Show her that you are not intimidated by an intelligent woman. How about? He didn't do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I, I was a bit mad at her at first. Because it was obvious to me that the only way she had a higher average than me was by cheating during online classes during COVID. <laughs> uh, why? She just can't be that intelligent, can't possibly be better than you, king of the, the circuitry lab or whatever you called it. <laughs> uh, oh my god, your ego is so fragile, dude. But I was questioning her morals and her decency as a human being. <laughs> oh god. Uh, but I couldn't stay mad at her for too long, considering she was going to be my girlfriend soon. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, no. Are, <laughs> he's still on about it. He really isn't giving up. I mean, okay, bully for him, I guess. It's good to have a dream, but this dream is going to stay a dream. It's my job as her future boyfriend to teach her correct morals and to guide her through uni. <laughs> what is happening, dude? Uh, is this a troll post? Is this just like the most delusional person on the entire planet? After this one interaction, she went to the professor like, hey, can I change lab partners? He's a total creep. And the dude is still out here like, yeah, she'll be my girlfriend someday. <laughs> uh, can we put this dude on a list? I, I normally don't condone lists, but maybe we just keep an eye on this guy. Lest that woman end up chained to a radiator in a basement somewhere. <laughs> this is so horrifying. Uh, this is what you call being nice to another person? <laughs> you're doing it wrong. Nice is the baseline minimum and you're not even meeting that. Can you not see that you're being creepy? This is all creepy stuff. I hope that this one's fake, but if it's real, I'm just going to say I am mortified by it. <laughs> this is terrifying. Oh, that lab partner, she need to like drop out of school. That's it. Get this dude expelled. Something. Nothing good is going to come from this. I would follow up on it, but username is all blacked out and maybe that is for the best, honestly. <laughs> maybe I don't want to look too long into the abyss. So uh, we'll move on. There's no way you swiped right on purpose. Dude, terrible start. What are you doing? 
<laughs> Hi, thanks for swiping. I'm a sad boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can tell. Uh, OP says, of course I swiped on purpose. Eh, I'm only five foot eight. Uh, I'm sorry. Jesus, dude. <laughs> Uh, she swiped. You, you, you got a foot in the door and you just... <laughs> I don't understand. This is just like a, a small glimpse into the incel mind, is it not? Even when there is a glimmer of hope, even when things seem to be going the right way for them, they refuse to even acknowledge it. They're just like, well, you, you can't possibly continue to like me because I'm short. Like, bro, she, she didn't ask you about any of that stuff. Start a conversation like a normal human being, please. For God's sake. <laughs> OP kind of rolling with the punches, just says, okay. Ha ha. <laughs> it's already so awkward. Oh, God. I, I know women want six feet or taller. Yeah, who told you that? Who told you that? Somebody that's dragging you down into the bucket of crabs, trying to make sure that you stay just as miserable as they are. You're on Tinder. You made the step. Obviously, you don't want to be there forever. So my advice, when you see an exit, take it. <laughs> uh, that is a rude and generalized assumption. Uh, well, I mean, am I wrong? Yeah, you are. <laughs> I can't even believe the conversation's gone on this long. <laughs> this would have been like instant unmatch. Look, I ain't got time to waste on this, all right? It's pretty obvious what you're all about. And personally, I don't want to be around someone who's like perpetually miserable, okay? And why is that? Because I'm the perpetually miserable one in our relationship, goddammit. <laughs> uh... Oh, it's only half truth. <laughs> Women have rejected me for it all my life. E exactly. Cause you're five foot eight, dude. That's above average, isn't it? Is it like five foot seven average? Okay, Google says 2017 five foot nine is the average. Cause you know nutrition's going up and stuff like that. But I still say my point stands, all right? <laughs> You're the one who's taken yourself out of the running for this. She swiped, bro. Just just have a conversation. Stop letting your insecurities get in the way. Your incel curities. <laughs> uh, OP drops the truth bomb and says, your attitude is the problem. Dang! Let him know. <laughs> How? I've watched the show Love Island UK before. <laughs> uh... <laughs> uh... Oh, that explains everything. <laughs> uh... Like I said, dude, the last guy says watching too much movies. This dude watching too much trash reality TV. What are you talking about? <laughs> Love Island UK. Uh, women didn't like short men on there. <laughs> uh, that's your trump card? Some, some crappy TV show that you watched? And you're like, oh, I guess it's true. I guess I have no hope of happiness now because the TV told me so. Let me tell you something. Let, let me give you a little secret, okay? The television also wants you to be miserable. They'll drag you down into the bucket of crabs so you have no choice but to sit around and watch Love Island UK <laughs> until the day you die. <laughs> Uh, you're out here, you're trying to make a human connection, why can't you just accept it? Hey, thank you very much for swiping, what are you into, etc, etc. I am so frustrated by this entire exchange, probably nowhere near as frustrated as OP is, but <laughs> I don't think this guy's ever gonna see the light, honestly. But OP tries and she says, and you think talking like this is going to help you? Hey, I don't believe that, but 
I don't like when women tell me my experience in life like it didn't happen. Now look, your whole attitude, your whole vibe, probably that is what puts women off of you, all right? It's sort of one of those chicken or the egg type of scenarios. Was he rejected because he was short and then he became a monster? Or did he become a monster and blamed it on him being short in order to preserve his own ego? I mean, that's a pretty simple one to riddle out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the majority of people out there aren't gonna be like, eh, five foot eight, eh, disgusting, manlit. <laughs> there's, there's, there's some chicks out there that date dudes that are shorter than them. There's nothing wrong with that. Short kings, rise up. Literally. <laughs> uh, got him. <laughs> um, except this isn't how you start talking to someone. If you aren't successful here, I would start looking at how you behave and talk to women. I was interested in you and who you were, but what you had to say right off the bat is not helpful for either of us. See, it, she swiped right on you, bro. <laughs> you got that foot in the door and he's just like, nah, she can't possibly mean it. Is your self-esteem really so low or is this like a ploy? One of those sad boy ploys where you expect a woman to swoop in and be like, I can fix him. Because while that might work every once in a while, it's definitely not the way to start off the relationship. I do appreciate OP telling him the 100% straight truth, but his mind is, is so warped, he's never going to be able to actually process it. Yeah, I've done research on it for about 10 years now. <laughs> 18 to 28. I have countless women who told me I'm too short. So I don't know what you mean by the way I talk to women. I'm respectful of every human I interact with. And to be fair, maybe he does think that he's being respectful. He hasn't said anything too horribly negative about OP. But let me tell you something, little bro. All right, the first person that you need to be respectful of is yourself. And that is when you will find true love. Love will burst into your life when you're not even ready. If you just focus on yourself. I will admit, it's not always the easiest thing in the world to accomplish. But at least, at least start practicing. You know what I mean? OP continues. Look at how you've projected yourself to me. Even just the first two things you said. Self-deprecation is not attractive. Bing bong. Got him. Nailed it. <laughs> you immediately made it about your height, which I didn't ask for, nor do I care about. I just want you to understand how much pain I'm in due to all of this. Jesus, bro. If, if you're looking to get into a relationship, maybe don't <laughs> start by unpacking your baggage in front of that person. The baggage comes a little bit further down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Once you both like each other's smiley faces, you're like, all right, let me take a peek into your baggage. And you and you decide if you can handle that or not. But if the first thing you do is, hi, nice to meet you, and shove their head into this giant pile of emotional baggage, <laughs> they are going to run screaming into the night. <laughs> God, dude. So I know nothing about you. And the first thing you want me to know is that you are in pain because women reject you allegedly for your height. Ah, allegedly, the operative word there. Allegedly, that's sad. If you told me you were rejected for something, I would believe you. Yeah, but that's not how I open conversations. That's, that's not how normal human beings open conversations. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not if that's the first thing you learn about the person. <sighs> because I struggle with it. <laughs> it's like you have no empathy for my situation. Ah, uh, just so beyond help. I don't understand why you gotta cut off your nose to spite your face. You know, <laughs> this doesn't make any sense at all to me. But OP does have like the best, most succinct answer. I never could have put it this beautifully. If you want validation or empathy, Tinder is the wrong place for you. I'm not your therapist. The women you meet here are also not your therapist. 
You need to work on your insecurities and your self-worth. I am unmatching you, but I'll be very clear that your height has nothing to do with it. And while I think that that was well worded and probably could have provided him a great source of insight, you know he read it and was like, yeah, it is my height. <laughs> Uh, what a shallow person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, then. Goodbye. Good luck with everything. Because you are going to need it, my friend. Just sad. So super sad. And yeah, he, he does need therapy. Everybody needs therapy. It's not a taboo subject, okay? I think some people can use it a lot more than others. This guy, I'm, I'm putting him on the priority list, honestly. You're able to get some matches on Tinder. Hey, that's step one. But your your sad boy, self-deprecating, low self-worth. Most women ain't gonna be willing to deal with that, all right? And hey, for good reason as well. Work on yourself, learn how to love you, and then maybe come back on the Tinder to love somebody else. If that's even what you're looking for. Or, or bang somebody else. But really, you're never gonna seal the deal if you're... <laughs> immediate response to getting matches to talk about your height and how horrible things have been for you. Oh, God! <laughs> uh, this is a dark, dark place. Let's do one more bad one, and then we'll do a good one to end this off. How about that? If the black pill is true, why do the people that I look smog bang more than me? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm a hot dude. I don't understand why I'm not getting any play. Because your attitude is ugly. What are, you, what are you talking about? And honestly, as far as I understand things, if you're banging at all, then you shouldn't even be on the incel forums. You're not even true cell, right? <laughs> uh... Why do some guys who are shorter than me and or have poorer facial features than me seem to have more dating success than I do? Perhaps my standards are too high. Perhaps they thug max or gesture max more. How does the black pill explain this? The black pill explains nothing. The black pill is a cope. I just love the, the phraseology of Thug Max and Jester Max. <laughs> uh, I'll be some chicks looking for a gangster dude, some chicks looking for a, a funny dude. I don't think anybody's out here looking for an Urkel cell, a terminally online dude who thinks that he's good looking enough to pull any chick he wants, but apparently for some reason could just never make it happen. <laughs> It's a total mystery. Surely it has nothing to do with your attitude, right? You're out here comparing yourself to other dudes, and that's the quickest way to fail. Honestly, it's only a competition with yourself. You have your own unique set of skills, and you need to learn how to utilize them. So good luck out there, buddy. I know you can do it. <laughs> you, you look smogger. Is that right? I don't know. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh. The denial is so strong, but every once in a while we get a, a shining pearl of hope. A little glimpse of wisdom shines down through the dark clouds, and here it is. Leaving the forum, I'm finding joy in life. Yes, yes, first step on the path to a better you right here. Leave it all behind. I've been leaving the house more. Surrounding myself in nature, working hard on my education, and not worrying about friendships or girls. Life is good, lads. I urge you all to find something that you are passionate about, and take no notice of what the normies think of you. Oh my god, I'm, I'm just loving this. This is life fuel, 100%, dude. When things are meant to happen, they will all happen in good time. The best that you can do is, is what's best for you at the moment. Hang out in nature. Yes. Work on your education. Yes. Do something that you generally enjoy. Yes. Stop allowing yourself to be pulled down into, into the crab pot, right? I hope you can all get out of this dark hole. Wallowing in misery and hate is letting society have its way with us. Despite how some people might act, there is some good left in the world. Goodbye.is. At Fat Link, please delete my account. 
God, dude. Just, ah. Uh, yes, I, I love to see this. I don't see it very often. But when it happens, it does my heart well. This is my reason to get up in the morning. This is my reason to fight. Because you have a reason to fight. Of course, it's easy to lay down and just say, eh, let it all rot. But life is not easy, friends, okay? You need to get up, put your, your big boy pants on, and forge a path towards a better you. Some days it's not easy. Like I said, I've been, I've been depressed these past few days. But the world does not stop turning. And the years, they fly by. So fake it till you make it. And even if you're just making little tiny baby steps, at least start to angle yourself towards success and the thing that you truly want to do. And the thing that you truly want to be. You have to eat all the eggs. <laughs> Why are you doing this? <laughs> You have to eat all the eggs! No proper hygiene, misogynistic beliefs, financially irresponsible, thinks real life works like porn, thinks everything's transactional, emotionally stunted, no personality or hobbies outside of a screen, unable to handle any rejection, smokes or drinks or uses drugs. <sighs> Am I a dateable? No, it's the women who have ridiculous standards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, this meme is good for so many things. I love Principal Skinner. The children are always wrong. That's just a fact. I do think that if an incel was able to get past all of these hurdles, get rid of all of these things, start functioning like a normal person in society, they might have a shot. You know, women's standards, it ain't that ridiculous. I'm sure they could deal with one or two of these things. <laughs> uh, like me, I'm financially irresponsible and emotionally stunted. Guess what? My wife's like, that's fine. <laughs> we'll deal with it. Everything else, yeah. If we start adding more stuff in there, I'm sure she would be out the door in no time flat. So just, you know, pick a couple of these and you'll be just fine, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> if you can leave them all behind, that would be ideal, but uh, Lord knows it's difficult. I know more than most people that it's difficult. But you could do it, incels. I believe in you. E kinda. <laughs> <laughs> I want a woman to make me feel what I feel when listening to this recording. Uh, I have no words. Only emotion. Thank you, Michael. Is this Michael Bolton or something? What is this video? <laughs> the sexy sax man coming through. Does this dude have like a, a boner for Michael Bolton? Cause I mean, I kind of do as well, but I'm not gonna put it on record. I'm not gonna go around on the internet saying some stuff like that. Oh wait, I just did. Nobody clipped that! <laughs> uh, hey, sadly, a woman's not capable of giving you that, sir. Because her love is conditional. Because of her natural dependency for resources. No resources, no love. Oh yeah, like when you're playing on Civ 5 and somebody comes and swoops up your uranium and you're like, now we're at war. Oh, it's nothing like that? You've been playing too much Civ 5? All right, <laughs> duly noted. They care about the resources. They don't care about human males. Welfare is a perfect example of that. Welfare? Is it welfare handled by like the government? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, dude. There's a whole hell of a lot to unpack here. He really does just view relationships as like this transactional thing, which is one of the things that was said in the first little meme there, right? <laughs> so already you got one one dark mark on the scorecard. I think it's three strikes and you're out. It's, it's working like that, right? So we also get uh, misogynistic beliefs. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say no personalities or hobbies outside of a screen. Emotionally stunted. Yeah, this guy's, he's out of the running already. <laughs> that is a really good reference sheet. God damn. How many resources do you think this guy actually has like in real life? 
<laughs> do you think he lives in his mom's house? Because I do. Do you think he's invested hundreds of dollars into the S&P 500? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that $200 investment that you made. You got tons of resources there, fella. Great job. All these gold diggers are going to come after you now. You better keep your head on a swivel. <laughs> uh, oh, you've crawled so far up your own ass, you can't even see the light of day. Ridiculous. I started out the post, I'm like, I, I believe you can bring it around, incels, but... Yeah, not this guy. <laughs> uh, thank you for being not you, a wonderful human being. <laughs> oh, Jesus. A freaky seven's hotter than a ten who only does missionary. Change my mind. I'm not going to try and change your mind about that. I am all about what you just said right now. <laughs> uh, I want a chick who fucks back. <laughs> Uh, I'll take the 10, which means she's definitely a teenage virgin. Oh, oh God. FBI, open up! He didn't say anything about that on the poster. Why are you taking it there? Please stop. Oh. <laughs> Years later, when she's 25, she'll depreciate... <laughs> God damn it, dude. Uh, this is heavy. When she's 25, she'll depreciate to the seven. And the experience, 100% of it gained with me, <laughs> will mean that I eventually get both. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I can just imagine him puzzling this one out, sitting behind his keyboard, stroking his gigantic greasy neck beard, and he's like, <laughs> yes, I will have both. <laughs> uh, teenage virgin's the first part that, like, punched me in the gut. But then also, like, when she's 25, she'll depreciate to a seven. I don't think that's how it works, friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, hot chicks are, are basically hot chicks, right? They get older, but, but they still look pretty hot. Just a different sort of hot, right? How about Marissa Tomei? Back in the day, good God, that's a good looking woman, right? And then you see her as she gets a little bit older. Oh, wow, she, she's still a good looking woman. <laughs> she's a bit more mature looking, but there ain't nothing wrong with that. Honestly... I've always had the biggest crush on Marissa Tomei. <laughs> so that's my go-to example. Well, put that in your pipe and smoke it. So your logic is flawed, sir. At least we all knew that already, but now I got a little bit of a physical proof, all right? You have not managed to change my mind. I don't even respect your viewpoint, honestly, because you've made it with non sequiturs and, and anecdotal evidence and really nothing that holds any sort of water. And also, uh, most importantly, more than any of those things, you're just creepy. You are a fucking creep. <laughs> Leave me alone. Get up from the table. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I always look at Holly Berry for that women who aged insanely well. I mean, black don't crack. That's what that is. <laughs> but you look so young. Well, you know what they say. Mm -hmm. True beauty black is ageless. Black don't crack. Honestly. Marissa Tomei, it's a, it's a miracle she's held up as well as she has. But I mean, yeah, there's there's tons of examples out there. You look at basically uh, anybody who was hot when they were younger, guess what? They're, they're still pretty hot when they're older, bar some like really weird shit. It doesn't work with like, you know, oh, that child actor, that's a cute kid. And then they grow up and look really weird because <laughs> it's like, yeah, look at Macaulay Culkin, right? But if they reach maturity and they are attractive, then they will be attractive for the the better part of their life. Some people even get more attractive. Look at fucking uh, George Clooney. Jesus Christ. George Clooney was an awkward looking uh, adolescent, but then he reached relative adulthood and he looked like pretty good. But then as he aged, he got like even more better looking. That's a miracle. <laughs> 
It might be the exception to the rule, but I'll be fucked if I'm going to agree with this guy. That's about all I got to say about this, so so we moving on. Why I hate feminism. <laughs> uh, here we go. Feminism caused this. That's an actual tag. What subreddit is this? <laughs> uh, holy shit, dude. It, it is stupid. And it hurts my ego. It slams my privilege in my face. It makes me feel like a worthless piece of shit. What? What is it? Oh, feminism. Okay, well... I think the point of feminism isn't to preserve a man's ego. <laughs> uh, I, I think you're missing out on the whole point. I think it's serving exactly the purpose that it is meant to serve. If it's doing all those things to you, supposedly. Uh, it's the reason men struggle. Because nobody cares or appreciates it. Because they have stupid shit like the fake wage gap. Feminists don't give a shit. Because they're a stupid movement that helps nobody. And it makes this world even more of a joke. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Uh, Jesus. Now, I will be the first to say that, yes, men do have their fair share of issues. I don't think supporting feminism completely shoves those issues aside, unless you're like, you know, an ultra-radical feminist. Can't we keep both of these issues in our mind at the same time? Are we really so small brain that we have to pick a side? Just pick a side! <laughs> it better be my side or else you hate me. I don't identify as a feminist. I don't identify as a as a men's right activist. I, I go right down the middle. Egalitarian, okay? Yes, there are things that concern both genders. Is it equal? I don't care. <laughs> If it feels worth talking about, then I will talk about it. A lot of times it does feel like it's it's easier to, uh, you know, identify men's issues, but that's probably because I'm a fucking dude, right? <laughs> uh, I have to take extra steps to realize the things that affect women. And it is possible. <laughs> Take yourself out of your own shoes. Put your own little baby ego aside. Which he even uses the word in this post. Ego. <laughs> Why are you trying to preserve your own ego, man? Shit doesn't do nothing but hurt. It never helps. Feminism is the, the reason that men struggle. Nah, man. <laughs> There is a, a whole multitude of reasons. You can't just point to like, oh, it wasn't until feminism came around that men had to die in wars or, or pay alimony at ridiculous rates or, or give up their kids, right? <laughs> Those things were not caused by feminism. Those things were happening before feminism. And it has kind of swung back the other way a little bit. My aunt and my uncle recently got divorced. Who got the kids? That's right. Uncle. <laughs> And I was uh, a little bit surprised by that, but it happened. So yes, I think everybody's out here doing the best that they can to keep things on as level a playing field as possible. And then you got dudes out here like this just throwing their hands up and be like, oh, it's all terrible. Nobody's trying. It's like, dude, you're the only one that's not trying. You're the one that laid down and said, oh, this is the reason I can't succeed. Stand up, fucking dust yourself off, get real. W what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a whole other post in itself. Is this world a joke? Yeah, maybe sometimes, but <laughs> you still gotta try. That's the whole point, all right? As long as I see people trying, that's good enough for me as far as I'm concerned. Next. <laughs> I'll dumb it down for you. Men are designed to reproduce with as many women as possible to pass on their genetic code. <laughs> Whereas there is no biological reason for women to cheat, but to cheat. I didn't think it was possible for this statement to get any dumber. But damn, you proved me wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, the reason men cheat is biological. The reason women cheat, oh, this is just because they want to cheat. Because they're a bunch of whores. <laughs> 
Uh, are, are you for real right now? I mean, overall, men do cheat more because of the physical side of things. You know, if your partner's not giving you the uh, affection that you feel like you need, then maybe you go seek it somewhere else. Uh, for women, it's more the emotional thing. If you are neglecting your, your partner's emotions, then she will seek that emotion somewhere else. And yeah, it might include probably a little bit of boing-boing, right? <laughs> <laughs> but none of this is, is biologically motivated, okay? This is because of what's going on in your own head. You always have the choice. It's so weak to just be like, I don't know. I do it because my caveman brain. Well, your caveman brain's your actual brain. Like, literally, you have the fucking brain of a caveman. Get your shit together, all right? <laughs> just get it all in a big bag. <laughs> get it all together and put it in a backpack. All your shit. So it's together. Uh, it's so ridiculous. I don't even know what the original post here was about, but it doesn't really matter because you said some dumb shit. <laughs> so uh, that's basically how it's going to go. There is no scenario that I can imagine that this sentence, I, I don't even want to call it a thought. It's just a sentence <laughs> would, would be acceptable or, or have people behind it like, yeah. This guy's got it right. <laughs> Everybody looks at this and says, wow, that guy's a fucking idiot. And I don't usually pay much attention to downvotes on Reddit, but yeah, I probably would downvote this as well. You just, you're just making excuses for yourself. And you're like, this excuse is good enough for me, but it's not good enough for a woman. No, sir. <laughs> just, just please, no more of this. All right, pack it in, you're done. Hey, rich six foot five Chad, it's me that came from a broken home, no personality, but being hot queen that you've been waiting for. Time to marry me and spoil me as I do nothing all day at your penthouse. You do realize hot, high class women exist, right? You can be my mistress for a few weeks till I replace you with someone hotter and younger. <laughs> a few weeks. <laughs> Oh, you've aged three months. I need a freshly 18, 18 year old. It's amazing to me that incels actually think that they're the Chad dude on the right or that this is how things work at all. This seems like something out of a movie that just had like the big reveal reversed, right? She's like, oh, I came from nothing, but you'll marry me despite me being poor. <laughs> and he's just like, nah, I'm just trying to hit it for a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, things like this don't really happen in real life, okay? How would these two people ever even meet? This is a fever dream from the mind of Hollywood. And I do think it's funny that the incels have kind of twisted it on its head. But, I mean, even if it went the way you expected it to go, this is all Hollywood, man. <laughs> it ain't never gonna happen. A rich dude, he'd have to be out there literally slumming, and, you know, <laughs> that's probably what he'd call it, too. He'd be like, I'm going to go hang with the lessers. <laughs> uh, his parents wouldn't allow it. Yeah, there was no way this was gonna work out. Even in a Hollywood 90s movie, alright? Probably at the end, he, he throws all his money out the window and runs away from his parents' house. Nah, fuck that, man. <laughs> I'm trying to get paid, alright? <laughs> Good luck with your life. I'm gonna be over here doing me. How about that? This is quite literally an incel's fever dream combined with a Hollywood fever dream. Like say that some incel hip hits it big with a crypto scam and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna turn down all those Stacys that rejected me. <laughs> sure you are, fella. The first chick that looks at him sideways, he's gonna be like, Yes! Oh, thank God women are finally paying attention to me! And she's gonna rob him blind. <laughs> uh, and honestly, I'll be here for it. I would love to see some shit like that. Unfortunately, like I said, yeah, this is, this is all a fabrication. <laughs> Things like this don't happen in real life. So uh, let's just move on. This is what would happen in real life if uh, an incel struck it big. Imagine this guy's a millionaire, all right? time in the city offending a lot of out of reach thoughts. Hey, I have a question. You think I can get your number? No, thank you. Go f*** yourself. Okay. Kindly go f*** yourself, please. Just die. <laughs>
Like, just please, just die. <laughs> just put a gun to your head and just blow your brains out. Please, just die. <laughs> I have so much hatred towards you women already. I can't stand you. rejected me all my fucking life. All my life. <laughs> the huff of indignation at the end. Oh, that escalated quickly. I mean, wow, that really got out of hand fast. <laughs> Even with a million dollars in his pocket, trying to approach women on the street. See, he's slumming. He's gone down to the slums to involve himself with the lessers. And still, they're like, no, stay away from me. And he's just over here seething. <laughs> Huff of indignation at the end. <sighs> Can't believe these bitches don't know who I am. <laughs> uh, nobody knows who you are, bro. You are literally nobody. They walk away at the end, even as he's ranting all his crap, and they don't even look back. Like he's a fucking ghost. I love it. <laughs> uh, Jesus. I mean, I am worried that this dude is going to hurt somebody eventually. This is like a very disturbing level of anger to have at complete strangers on the street. We need this guy like locked up 20 years inpatient therapy in a, a top of the line mental hospital or bottom of the line mental hospital actually. That's more along the lines of what he deserves. <laughs> uh, but man, I'm just I'm just blown away by this dude and the indignation that he could have. Shoving a camera into a woman's face, saying, can I have your number? And then berating her afterwards. You know, she's walking away like, I just dodged a bullet. <laughs> uh, what do you think would have happened if she said yes? She'd be dead within the week, man. All I'm saying is be careful out there. <laughs> Reject them first so you know who you're dealing with. <laughs> that's that's a good way to go about it. Maybe. I don't know. Don't listen to me for dating advice, for God's sake. <laughs> Just don't be this guy. I can tell you that much for sure. <laughs> Christ. Uh, walk in the streets at night. See this? What do? It's a drunk woman on a park bench. Uh, I mean, probably go home. <laughs> <laughs> not my circus, not my monkeys, as far as I'm concerned. Might seem cold, but yeah, why Why am I going to get involved in her fucking business? Oh, because her, her panties and her tits are out? Fuck you, you're disgusting. <laughs> I'd offer her my coat to cover up and to ride home. Oh, you're so nice, and I'm sure there's no ulterior motive there. <laughs> but wait, it gets creepier. I'd help her up and carry her disoriented body to my place. Disoriented body. Oh, oh, we call that foreshadowing in the literary world. <laughs> uh, let her sleep on my bed as I sleep on the couch. I deal with her freak out when she wakes up. Ask her if she's okay. You don't have to tell me what happened, but you do have to eat this as I hand her a bowl of eggs. <laughs> uh, a bowl of eggs. <laughs> uh, ask her if she needs a ride home and tell her to take care. Holy shit. Wizard detective. High level. Embarrassing. <laughs> Take her back to my place. Think you don't have to tell me what happened, but you do have to eat. This is a smooth line. Jesus Christ. Were you the creepy one at school? He 100% was. This is... <laughs> this is so far over the line. Uh, oh, God. Hi. Are you awake? Why are you screaming? Please stop. Here. Eggs. Please don't go. Door slam. I love you too. <laughs> you have to eat all the eggs. <laughs> Why are you doing this? <laughs> you have to eat all the eggs. Uh, uh, I've seen this before on the internet. This has been floating around since 2012, 2013, but <laughs> holy shit, dude.
uh, to see it resurface with the magnifying lens of incel laid over it. Oh, holy shit, man. Uh, it's been happening for longer than we realize. Old butt gold. <laughs> I want to get that MS paint tattooed on my body. You have to eat all the eggs. <laughs> Uh, if we hit a million subscribers, I'll do it. <laughs> this is what brought me here. A bowl of eggs. <laughs> Please, I want to go home. <laughs> uh, oh, I have been sent. <laughs> this is so good. A uh, dude really posted this like, yeah, <laughs> this is going to work. <laughs> Uh, this post, almost 10 years old. And since this post, uh, things have been transformed horribly, right? It used to be just some weirdos on 4chan. Now it's its whole own movement of incels. Jesus Christ. Whew. Buckle in, lads. <laughs> There's some heavy stuff we got going on here. The last thing that can really be said about this is, you know it's really bad, when 4chan is the one making fun of your inceldom, right? <laughs> uh, basement dwelling 4chaners are mocking <laughs> how unsmooth you are. <laughs> uh, I love it so much. Like I said, million subs, I'll get that shit tattooed on my body. <laughs> I don't even care no more. It's just too good. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, nobody else is going to know what it means. <laughs> but the real ones know. The real ones always know. Oh. If I wasn't so addicted to this forum, I would have other hobbies. <laughs> uh, bro can't get off the internet. What's wrong with you, son? <laughs> Dude's name is I want an emo girlfriend, which is <laughs> just pathetic to say the least. This is not how you get an emo girlfriend. This is not how you get any sort of girlfriend. Oh, I'm just too addicted to the internet to go outside. Come on, man. <laughs> get yourself an internet girlfriend. What happened to that? <laughs> Kids these days, they just too good for internet girlfriends, huh? Let me grab my cane so I can shake it at you kids and stay off my lawn! <laughs> I hate that the internet has become an addiction for me. I know it sounds like cucked boomer advice, but I unironically need to go outside more. The problem is, normies hate me and don't want to hang out with me, so the only place I can go to socialize is on this forum. It's a catch-22. 967 posts on incels.is. Uh, I mean, maybe if you tried to be a bit more of a normie, normies might like you. Stop being so mad at the world for absolutely no reason at all, and people might find you more palatable. Maybe, perhaps... It's just a theory, but I would think that it's worth a try, especially since you're now feeling trapped on the internet. The internet's the easiest thing. You can get up and walk away anytime, man. <laughs> I get stuck in the internet a whole heck of a lot too, so I identify, but there are times that I get up, walk away, leave my phone at home on purpose because I'm like, today is time to spend time with my kids or with my wife. 100% no distractions. And... I think it's a good practice to get into. You can exist without it. I believe in you, and it's not cucked boomer advice. It's how people functioned for hundreds of years before the internet came into existence and sucked out all of our brains. God bless the internet. <laughs> I love it so much, but you can't suck my brain all the time. It gets a little raw and chapped up there. <laughs> Sometimes I just need some me time, you know what I'm saying? Give it a try. That's my suggestion. I'll be calling females uteri from now on. Oh, yeah, you're really gonna show them, aren't you? <laughs> uh, like anybody's gonna think twice about it. They're just gonna be like, 
What a what a fucking weird dude. <laughs> I don't even know what he's talking about. What is that, Greek or something? Get out of my face, you gross little goblin. <laughs> and calling a bitch a female doesn't feel scathing or, or witty enough. A foid is just a fake word that doesn't roll off the tongue too well. <laughs> and only soys call them the term that implies they're equal to men. Women? Isn't female? Never mind, I'm not going down this path with you. <laughs> but uterus rolls off the tongue perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, this kid is really down bad, isn't he? <laughs> um, I got sad news for you, son. Uterus is never going to be anywhere near your tongue, or your toes, or your <laughs> nose, <laughs> or your dick for that matter. Just retire it. All of it, this is the only time that he has to bring up uteruses, and so I guess he's going to take full advantage of that. <laughs> <laughs> it also names them by the one and only thing that they're useful for. <laughs> the one and only reason that we haven't driven them to extinction by now. The only thing a uterus is good for is her uterus. <laughs> uh, oh my god. You legit- is this a shit post? It can't be. It's on their forum. And he's like really thinking that he got- got one over on somebody. He's like, oh, I figured out the, the be-all, end-all. Everybody's gonna be so insulted. No, I'm pretty sure that everybody's just gonna think you're really weird. Even weirder than you have already revealed yourself to be, okay? This is ultimate wizard status. This is almost on par with the guy that, with the bull of eggs that chained up that girl to his radiator. He's like, you can't leave till you eat the eggs, you uterus. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to every uterus who is listening to this video because they all just shriveled up <laughs> and died just from hearing it. That is the sort of magic that G Wizard has over everybody else on the internet, right? I have never seen a wizard out themselves as such a wizard before. Oh, it's a it's a KKK thing. It's a grand wizard. I see what's going on. Look at the profile picture. That makes it even a new level of disgusting. Congratulations! <laughs> uh, God, I hope he never reproduces, dude. If there is any justice in this world, this man will never find anybody to share his life with. I hope he dies alone and seething. <laughs> uh, that's the most that I can hope for this particular incel. All right, to, to wrap it up, we got a string of posts from Reddit, and uh, we've got some incel science going on here, so get yourselves ready. <laughs> uh, having a high body count generally destroys intimacy for people when they meet the one they want to spend their lives with. Also, women with more than 10 body counts are more likely to cheat. More than 10 body counts. Like you have a different body count for every body that you inhabit. Is she a poltergeist or some shit? I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> a body count of more than 10 is I guess what he's trying to say. And really all this does is display like some deep-seated insecurity, okay? Do you like and have a good time with that person? If the answer is yes, then it really shouldn't matter what her body count is. There are some numbers that certainly I couldn't deal with. Once we get too far up there, I'd be like, you know, that's actually not something I'm interested in, you know? But I think everybody has that right. But 10? <laughs> 10 seems relatively low, doesn't it? But okay, let's hear the science behind it, I guess. <laughs> their orgasms aren't as powerful as their first time, as the nerve endings get numb over time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think that's how nerves work. He thinks it's like equivalent to getting a third degree burn every time you have an orgasm. He's like, yeah, these nerve endings, they're just dead. Now she can't have an orgasm anymore. <laughs> Uh, are you for real right now? Oh, and having a high body count ruins your ability to have a relationship. 
But yeah, nobody should be shamed for it. It's their life, after all. I can't tell if that last part is sarcasm. I'm going to go ahead and assume that it is based on everything else that he said here. And yes, having a high body count doesn't ruin your ability to have a relationship. It might ruin your ability to have a relationship with them because of some inborn insecurities. And again, you're well within your right to feel that way. But honestly, I, I don't think that 10 is a number where you should be like, oh, disgusting. Now all the nerves in your vagina are dead. You're useless to me. <laughs> uh, come on, bro. What are you even talking about? To me, it really sounds like this dude is just salty that his count is zero, right? <laughs> Let's put some stuff in perspective through the beautiful movie Clerks by Kevin Smith. 37? My girlfriend sucked 37 dicks in a row? 37. My girlfriend sucked 37 dicks in a row? So somebody obviously replied to this dude and he replied to that person. We don't have the, the reply to his first video. We'll just pretend that he's talking to himself because that's slightly funnier. So you're supporting misandry, Lamau. The more a thing is used, the lesser its value gets. <laughs> Great. So you're just comparing women to like dirty shoes at some point. <laughs> uh, holy shit. Wow. It's the same case for women with high body counts. Well, that's true. There's no evidence to damaging of nerves. <laughs> uh, really? You wouldn't think this guy would put his credibility out on the line by saying such a thing. But here he goes, winding it back. Yeah, there is no evidence. I just kind of said it because I'm full of shit. I know. <laughs> but it does kill excitement in your sex life. You can't deny that. I can. I mean, there's a difference between fucking a bunch of chicks or dudes and being like emotionally connected to one person and having your lives intertwined. You know what I mean? I've fucked chicks before. I've got a body count. My, my wife is still fine with it because... I've never been, like, emotionally invested enough to marry somebody, to have kids with somebody, to share my entire life and the rest of forever with this one person. There's a difference. And honestly, it wouldn't matter if her body count is 300, because once I found her and learned who she is as a person, I'm like, Jesus Christ, I can't see myself existing without you. It doesn't matter after a certain point. If you're just trying to bang it out, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Take that number, let it chase you off, whatever. But if you find the right one, if you're truly head over heels, then it won't matter. As long as you guys have a good time together, it does not matter. It stays exciting. <sighs> I personally would never date a woman who slept around more than me. Well, it's hard to find anybody else with a, a zero, right? <laughs> Uh, men can have the equal excitement because high libido. <laughs> I mean, my wife's libido is much higher than, than mine is. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go on record with that one. Yeah, she's insatiable. I'm an old man, at, <laughs> if we want to put it quite bluntly. You shouldn't indulge in these topics because you sound like a fem cell. So your body count's not existent anyways. I'm no longer arguing after this. You're low IQ bird brain ass Lamau. Wow, that is a fifth grade insult if I've ever heard one. <laughs> uh, your body count's not existent. Like, this is the be all end all. Like, the world revolves around who has what number for their body count. Get over yourself. <laughs> uh, this is the dumbest fucking thing I ever heard. Pot, pot, come over here. Meet my friend Kettle. You're both virgins. You get along. <laughs> uh, and finally, I, I think this is OP replying. And it is a decent dunk, so I guess we'll end the video with a decent dunk. She says, one, do not call me hun. Two, I did Google and only found results stating the opposite from you. So again, please be so kind as to provide some actual scientific evidence for your claim that sex with multiple people numbs the vagina. <laughs> yeah, numbs the vagina like num 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 num. 
<laughs> like Cookie Monster and shit. <laughs> Uh, and some video of a black pill YouTuber doesn't count. I mean, actual scientific evidence. Three, I'm not understanding your logic in the first place. A lot of sex with one partner does not numb the nerve endings, but sex with a lot of people does. How can the clit or vagina tell the difference? <laughs> That's such a good point. And why does that same concept not apply to penises? Uh, please elaborate on that. <laughs> uh, got him, coach! Again, either provide proof for your claims or admit that you're wrong if you're unable to provide proof. Saying, use Google in a discussion where you made a claim is not it. I mean, asking anybody for proof of anything on the internet, it, it should be it, but it's honestly not it either. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just banging your head against a wall. While I think that your reply was smart, I think the smartest thing to do would be to not reply at all. Is this guy affecting me negatively in some way personally? No, he's not. All right, whatever. I'm not going to waste my fucking time. <laughs> That's how I view things, but good on you, OP, for taking it on and, and trying to teach somebody about how wrong they are, even if he will never admit it to himself, let alone others. Good God. All right, we got to wrap this one up. Uh, I feel my brain melting. People in Twitch chat can clearly see that my body is melting. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe. You know, all of that stuff. That's pretty cool. You could share the video around if you know some people that know some incels. I hope that you don't. <laughs> but it happens, I guess, maybe once in a while. We've also got links down in the description. Plugs, playlists, podcasts, you know, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you at on the internet, I'm also there. Or so I shall try to be. We've also got my social medias down there. Twitter, Discord, Facebook, Twitch, well, where this was all live stream. People currently playing with the soundboard, farting in my ears, fucking with my brain parts. <laughs> but it's all a good fun. We've also got my Patreon, of course, and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons, whom I would like to thank as I do every episode. Jerry, a Jerry much, a so a thank you. Wire P and Jerry, Doug Lush, Charlie Hill, Rebecca Squirrel, Robert Alloway, Camille Sarah, Chase from Blue Kraken, Malama Man, Roxanne Wolf, Sin, Jerry, aka Don Break the Drake, Conrad Ingy, Kathy Cloud, Jerry, Destiny Piper, Aaron Jerry, Alexis Smith, Broken Logic, Esteban, Fraud, Langside, Mighty Dan for I Wear, you hang in there. Organic Steve, Bean Tom with a bag of marbles from downtown, with Jerry, Break for Forgiveness, Fat, Silo Roller, PCB, The Original Jerry, Jerry, Tick Jerry, Jerry, Shasune, Satori, 211 Jerry, The Two Jerry's, A Very Tired Jerry, A Dusty Jerry, 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 Play the hero, Blue Jerry, Catholic Jerry, Chelsea Kitsune, Commander J. Tech, Confederate Jew, Dennis Dane, Dr. Lodge, Duck, <laughs> just Duck, <laughs> Emergent Jewel, Aaron Era, East Mars, Frozen Over Studios, Fire Drake, Gypsy, Hey 3BR, I'm Slim Jimmy, I'm the real Jerry, Irish Pirate, So a Leprechaun below decks, Twas that or a stowaway Jerry, yeah. <laughs> I'm your radiant damn. If you touch, just scratch a bro, a pin named Jay Chris, yes, you have to say the whole thing, J.M. Coon, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Nice, Jerry Evil, Jerry the Outlaw of the Trucker, Jerry Beans, now with green apple and Jerry Berry flavors, John Hero, John Jerry, Jingle Hammer Schmidt, bro, you ain't gonna believe this. It's my fucking name too? Crewy, <laughs> Jimmy Girl, Miss Monday, Lord Jerry, like and subscribe, I'm a lady DX, the next to the last Jerry Bender, I have anxiety. <laughs> Marble Mabel, Melgar the Destroyer, Metal Factor, Needless King 89, Nightmare Jerry, Paragon Soul, Phantom of Pines, Jerry Kinson, Jerry Bat, Queens, Quailers, and Quiet Miners, Ramtide Lacrimates, Rose Jerry, Miller, T.S. and Kirby, Sarita the Lolita, Sassy Out the Pussa, Skyless Covenant, Serena Moore, Sergeant Gaycock, Bringer of the Log, Gaycock, not Gaycock. <laughs> God damn it! Silo Web, Stephanie Gunder, Dynastic <laughs> Boomstick, Marie Tabago, Tabby of the Blue, Tato Fair, Tento Monster, <laughs> the Italian Greyhound, Dino, Oh, the Little Who, Who wants your fusky? Trying to find another bomb to get back to the real world. Ah, uh, you probably don't want to blow into that balloon, not. <laughs> I'm busy, me. V3 Prime, Vanguard Angel, Viking Jerry, Void version 3, because Red keeps killing me at Battle Brothers. Didn't happen, I didn't see it. Wiki Tag, <laughs> Will Bags, Zephyr Gargoyle, or Clay, it's Jerry time. Hold Red X Morpher, Self Reflection, <laughs> Conrad Moody, Kira, not another Jerry, but he is though. Red Wing, Dog Viper, Saint Blessing, the third step, Venom Jerry, Jace Christensen, one leg Jerry's leg was stolen by Pissant. I see it. A normal Jerry, active transformation belt, Hashin, Tony Rider, Beard Grease. <laughs> Uh, oh, Admiral T. Tank, Amber Alder, another stupid hipster, Atomic Jerry Zilla, Breaker of the Tom Army, Babs Goon, Bartender Kaleo, Blueberry and Apple Pie, Purpose Pine Horse Radish, Cake Jerry, the original different Jerry, California Jerry Girl, Shepard Seven Lock, Chikara, the Panda, Cody, secretly a Jerry operative though, Cobra, Admiral, Lieutenant Prince of Free Warrior, Blue Jerry, <laughs> Crypt Cities, D Crazy, aka SDI Jerry, Devon Jerry, Deptune, Devil Mean Jane, Jerry is, Dwarfy Dude, Ghost Mouth, but he cannot, Holy Fairy Jerry, Dana Jerry made it across the Finland, and only lost a handful of bottles playing Vatimir, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Gerald of Arabia, Jerry and Tom versus Happy New Year's Wimby Proclips, Jerry the Sussy Baka, Jerry's mom has got it going on, check out the mustache on Jerry Aldo Rivera, Jerry Roxas, Jerry Roleplay Game, Judge Jerry and Executioner, King Tails, Kid Modelers, Kids Again, Life of Guardian, Little Lynn Woods, Lucia Lovecraft, Mother CD. CD nuts. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> Milkman give Miss Dutch's not invisible angel. Raptor Art, she's my Jerry Pie. Snary, that's Nam Jerry. Snowman, what is best in life? To crush your neck beards, to put their feet to Jesus, and to hear the lamentations of the body pillows. <laughs> Spooky the Rogue. Spooky scary Jerry Tun. Nah, Techno Dubs. Uh, the original Jerry. Not. To infinite Jerry and beyond. We on the way. Unkale, underwater movies. Unfortunate Jerry screaming in the latest magical girl transformation. Make a stop. Throws two liter Mountain Dew. They grow my neck beard. Grow. It's Jerry time. Holds Red X Morpher. Hygiene. It's Jerry time. Holds Red X Morpher. Humility. <laughs> Both important. You know who's also important is my $1 patrons. Thank you to all you beautiful people as well. 
Holla! Big, big thanks again to every uh, Jerry and not Jerry alike on the Patreon, helping me to do all kinds of crazy stuff with this channel. We are only growing, and it is beautiful to see. So, yes, thank you again, forever, always. Uh, if somebody else would like to join me on the Patreon, that's absolutely huge. But if you can't do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like uh, watch a small Red X videos. That'd be pretty cool. Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, friends. You have to eat all the eggs. <laughs> Why are you doing this?